from my intentions always being pure. They done always been pure, bro. Like, nobody f with me tomorrow, I'll still do this for free. Forever. Like, I done did it for free. Forever. Like, who do you think would be great for a producer versus for you? I ain't really talked about it probably ever or too much. The world don't know your plan. So a fall back will look like a fall off. Oh my God, not you letting found this old video. <laughs> And ain't too many of this <laughs> girl, okay. You could probably trim some of it down when I'd just be like, thank you for two trim minutes. Like, uh... There's too many gems. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. Welcome back to another episode of the podcast. Now, today we got one of those special interviews. Like, I've been waiting on this one. I ain't gonna lie. I've been waiting on this I've one for a long it. time, bro. No cap. I've been waiting. Yeah, yeah. This is one of the guys. I say him. Southside team. Who else? Spins, I'm trying to think back then, Zaytoven, like these guys is what our channels built off of when the channel started back in like 2015, 2016. So we got Metro booming. Man, I appreciate you. I'm blessed to be here. I appreciate y'all having me. Yeah, yeah, bro. And we got Mimi from Producer Culture. You already know. Yep, regular Dengler. Producer so, I mean, Culture. We could get into the credits, but like it's so many, bro. We got Travis Scott, Don Tolliver, Future Young Thug. 21 Savage, Kanye West, Post Malone, Drake, Kodak, Migos, Offset, Gucci Man, Uzi, Weekend, Nav, Big Sean, Times like. Damn, you <laughs> Times like 50 more. <laughs> it's just so long, bro. I ain't even gonna lie. Myself. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We ain't gonna get into that way. Nah, yeah. We ain't gonna talk about how he just whooped everybody in album sales. You know what I'm saying? We ain't gonna talk about that. Album sales, rollout. Everything. Literally everything. Man, I appreciate but y'all. We're gonna get into some icebreakers first. It wouldn't be me if I didn't do icebreakers. So, right. what fictional character do you most relate with? Mm, that's a good one. Damn. See? I ain't gonna lie. That's a good one. That's a good one. I love movies like, about just as much as music, so I could. I could probably think about that for three days straight. That's but a good one, huh? That's a good one. Um, it'd probably be a lot of them. Mm. All right, top three. Batman. We got the same last name. Oh, wow. That's hard. Not just because that, but Batman. Right, minus all the trust fund shit. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't never had no question like that in my life. I'm really good at these. I see. <laughs> I feel like it's like school Like when you really gotta think like That shit feel like a quiz <laughs> Yeah like a quiz Like you try to figure out in your head Like You wanna come back to that? We might can answer that at the end We could come back to that Let me yeah, go I'm to the next one about that. What is one thing on your bucket list That you have to achieve? Hmm. I wanna travel the world With my brothers and sisters Oh that's nice That's a good one Um Thought Bear gonna say some shit like make the song with the president or something. I said make a song with the president. <laughs> That's some fire shit. <laughs> something like shit. Yeah, Obama on the track. That, that would be, be hard as fuck though. I can see it. it's possible. Obama fuck with it, man. How you know? I was just saying like the community. Like oh. he fuck with the community. I didn't mean like producer guy. <laughs> <laughs> Obama watch producer grind. You imagine he might though. He might though. He might. I feel like the first one a good answer. Ask him the, ask him the third one. I'm gonna hear this third one though. Okay. Oh, this and. Don't steal my idea because I'm already doing this, y'all. But who would you, who do you think would be great for a producer versus for you? Damn. What y'all think first? Weez. Yeah. Weez. I, w- I wouldn't say Southside, but y'all got a whole lot of collaborative records. It's like Same. a lot of y'all. Um, I would say Weezy, like this generation, Weezy. That'd that's be fine. That's the best one. That's going to be hard as fuck. Damn. We would be there all day because it's like, when you think it's over, here come another hit. Like, I know this is going to be a real, too. So, Weezy, drop the album, bro. We waiting on that, too. And shout out my brother to Wade, man. Wade was there in them dark days. He was there. Um, I know Weezy's in high school, too. That's crazy. Yeah, okay. yeah for sure. Man, I know Weezy a long time. Since I was, like, 16. But, um, um I don't know. I had, they had asked me something about a versus yesterday, like a versus type question. And I was just like. No way. Not they trying to steal my idea. Yeah, they did yesterday. Nah, and they really asked the out. same thing. And. um. Yeah, I got to push this shit out tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, right. Got to blast yours. <laughs> I was really like. I love the versus thing. Shout out. Shout out. Swiss. Shout out Tim. OGs, man. Big bros. But. um, I just feel like. That's. I feel like it's more for like artists and people who like uh like well out they prime. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like 
with me really feeling like, I know other people might feel like I've had my prime or I'm in my prime, but I feel like I'm just now about to enter that. So I feel like. you got it, a long way to go. You yeah, feel? you know what I'm saying? Like, what if, what if, uh, if Dr. Dre or somebody was supposed to do a versus or anybody like that, or uh, Kanye, and you just count, or for real, you just count the first 10 years of that shit, it'd be like, man, you're going to be leaving really everything out. That's a fact. Uh, I feel so. You know what I'm saying? Fact. So, like, probably when I'm like, I'd probably be ready to do a versus when I'm like 50. Lifespan of a producer, that's what. No, literally. What is yeah. it? 20 years? Man, it's however long you can maintain 20, it. 20, 30. Because you got to think even Quincy ain't make thrillers till he was 50. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I definitely didn't even know that. And that's the biggest shit of. Yeah. Some all time shit, and he was fifty. Like, what if he stopped at forty or stopped? Like, you know, and he was doing that shit from young. So you basically saying it ain't no like, no like time limit on this producer shit. You could be thirty, nah, forty, man, be, fifty. Because it, it ain't just based off like hip hop. Like a rapper, shit like that is off. Of, is based off of like trends and being cool, and a lot of part of that is being younger. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Not saying you can't rap when you're older, but it's just like it's mostly like. A young person's sport. Right. Versus producing, like being on the other side, like man, you could you could just keep you could never stop. You could do that as long as you really want to. You know what I'm saying? Like I like singing with most singers. That's why you see like a lot of singers' careers like outlast rappers like more than double or something. You know what I'm saying? Like I think about like people like Patty LaBelle and they just kept singing. You know what I'm saying? Because it's not just you still got your voice. You can still sing good. Like, it's based off that versus, like, rapping and being young and being hip and knowing all the slang and shit going on in the streets. Right. You got to know what to rap about. You know what I'm saying? They got to be trending facts. Not saying you can't be older and rap. You can, but you just got to cater to your another age, audience. Yeah. Or, like, your age. Like, if I was a rapper and older, I probably, I would just rap for niggas my age. If I was, like, 40 something rapping. Like Jay Z do though. Like he ain't trying to rap for no niggas that's 17. But if you listening, like he could put you on game, but it's not like catered towards you. Mm -hmm. Right. His audience is way older. You know what I'm saying? That's why he's still successful at it because he's not trying to like just play the young man's game. Like you gotta let them have it. Nah, that's facts though. That's, that's facts. That's yeah. pure facts. I ain't even gonna lie. That's a great point of view. Nah, yeah, I be, bro, I'm a student of the game. Like, I be watching. Analyzing all this shit, like from a child, like, I just be watching everything, like just taking it in. You still watch tutorials, like producer tutorials? Um, hell yeah, I watch them all the time. I asked that because you brought it the new year, posting the pic of you cooking up with the Flex VST. Yeah, with the Flex. I ain't gonna lie, you got, <laughs> the fuck? We gotta talk about that one. Man, you I. You use Flex? Yeah, I just started. I just started. When I had updated my shit to 21 on my Mac, I just started. Like, I ain't know about it, but I was, uh, and I ain't know it was going to be that big of a deal when I post that shit. Everybody, like, every producer was hitting me like, oh, you use Flex, you use Flex, you use Flex, you use Flex. <laughs> oh, Metro, you use Flex. I told y'all I was good. I was like, damn, what, what niggas was talking about Flex or something? Like, it wasn't official? Some people said it's official. Some people was like, they were, it was some doubts. It was some doubts. I've been making bangers on this shit all week. Then like, shout J Rock, um, Lady Eight. He uh, cause I, we was on the phone. I told him about the flex the other day. I was like, man, he got for that flex shit. Then he called me back like yesterday, like, and I put up on him at the studio. He been using it all week, making crazy shit. So like, it ain't even. It, it's really like how you use shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I remember uh, first how I got on the flex. Why even go to that story? How I got on the flex was. I ain't, I wasn't even on FL21 yet. Like, I was just, I just ignored it type shit. Then one of the girls, shot one of the girls was telling me about it. And she was like, man, you got to fuck with it. Ooh. I'm a big fan of one of the girls. I always fuck with her, fuck with her beats, fuck with her as a person. But she had sent me the video where it showed you, like, everything new in FL21. Mm. I was just watching that shit. I was like, damn. So I had got it, and I've been using that shit every day, the FL21. But back to the, um... What they saying about flex? Like it's just like 
Some bullshit. I mean, we just ain't. We ain't. I feel like because it's stock, they just look at yeah, it. Yeah, like, because it's stock. That's why. That, it's stock. You know what I'm saying? Like, stock got folk, some. These folks got still some shit, make though. virtual instruments. Like, they made a whole, it's, uh, got a whole dog. You don't think they could just make some uh, sound? Shit. They got some decent shit in there. It's just what you do with it, bro. Like, I remember um, when we had did some more with Thug. I had got a new laptop that day, but I ain't had no sounds on it. I ain't had nothing. I just had my drum kit. And I was in there with Sonny and TM. We was in there with Slime. And uh, and that whole beat to that Want Some More song, that whole shit was just all stock shit. It was all just citrus. You know what I'm saying? And like, that's why I always say it's not really how you use, what you use, but how you use it. You know what I'm saying? Cause you give a nigga who really don't know too much of what he doing, everything is still like, don't mean he can just turn out a banger. This nigga Timbaland was using pots and pans and pencils and all kind of shit, you know? It's all just on your mind and, and what's in you and what you gonna do with it, how you gonna tweak it, how you gonna just finesse it. Damn, we gotta do a stop plug in challenge like. Hey, hell yeah. Y'all yeah, do a cook up with a stop plug in, post it on IG and we'll lick it. Yeah. Flex straight. That'd be hard. You know, and even when I had first seen it, like I was kind of, I wasn't looking at it sideways, but you know how we feel about stock things just mm -hmm. already subconsciously. I was just like, I was like, mm, let me see. But then I went through it and I was hearing people say it was fire. I went through it. I was like, pretty decent. So like, what are like top five plugins you recommend right now? Mm. You know how to X too. You know what you're going to get into it. <laughs> top five. Top five. Like effects or, or, or both? Both. Top five plugins for me right now. Hmm. I mean, everybody uses Omnisphere. Um, you heard about the, uh, bro, what's the shit called, bro? Why, why, why every time I got there bring it up, I forget the name, bro. What's it called? It started with an S. I don't even know. Fuck, oh, bro. It's like the expansion packs, but I forget what it's called. It's not what it is, bro. Sonic, Sonic Extensions. I ain't know about that. Y'all put me on the Sonic right Extensions. Yeah, 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 Sonic Extensions. Oh, no, no, it's, like, it's like Omnisphere expansion packs. So you know how like you can get expansion packs with like third party? Yeah. But it's Omnisphere, and they got this one called like Nine Line Skies Guitars. And it's like some of those shits, like for every preset you hit, it's like four other presets in the Sonic Extensions. Damn. I stopped using Honestville for a while and then I seen her yeah, about that. Yeah, because like we done. Uh, yeah, it nah, like, that shit fire. It's like a whole, it's like a whole different Honestville full of new sounds and shit. For real? Yeah. Built by Spectra Sonic. I'm finna buy this one and get home. Not, hey, look. Appreciate you, man. Honestville, <laughs> affiliate link me. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, get them right. Yeah, you feel me? <laughs> but what's the other for? But um, shit, I'll probably end up putting that in there. You making this sound fire. And Spectra Sonic, they be making some hard shit. But I'll say, um, they got a lot of other hard plugins I fuck with. Like I, I use Trillion a lot. Yeah, Trillion. Right. I use uh the Stylus RMX, the uh like percussion, like drum shit they got too is hard. That's a VST? Yeah, it's from Spectrosonic. But everybody overlook it. Don't nobody use it for real, cause it's like I guess cause they ain't like sounds, but they got like a lot of fire like just percussions and like just movements, like you just mix in and just add a lot of bounce. You can shift like the swing and all that. Like it's hard. Um, I say I use con I fuck with contact a lot. Contact, so it's all kind of shit in that. Yeah, that's like I feel like the contact makes are they own VSTs. You feel me? Yeah, exactly. So contact, um, Serato sample for show, sure. for show sure, for show. Sure. Serato sample, Serato sample or fruity slicer. I've been using Fruity Slicer for over a decade, for a long time. And I still use it. I still use it all the time. But the Serato Sample. Because Serato Sample will detect the key, the tempo, the time stretch is amazing. The, um, you know, I DJ too, so just the technology that Serato got to be able to, like, shift and like stretch shit and not make it sound like and it still sound like just as good I ain't never heard nothing else do that shit like that so I say Serato Sample that's a big one um I'm trying to think I'm trying to think of some effects now effects and I go to right now Portal man <laughs> shit the new what's that 
Porter? Yeah. It's like. But look at his face. He's like, Man, this nigga don't know Porter. What's Porter? It's, it's, like, it's like, you know, Shaper Box. What's that? Damn, Metro. It's like, it's like, gro- it's like, it's like the new gross beat. For real? Yeah. Like, it's That's what I'm saying. Y'all yeah. young. Y'all got to keep me here. What's that? What's that? Um, Porter. That shit fire. You put Shaper Box on there too. Shaper Box. Shaper Box crazy. Shaper Box. I never heard that one. Shaper Box? Yeah, Shaper Box crazy. Cable guys. Yeah, they fly. Yeah, nah, for sure, for sure. Let me see. You say you DJ too? Yeah. Oh, wow, I never knew that. Yeah, for sure. And were you DJing like before you were producing? Nah, nah, I had I had started DJing well after I started producing. I had, um, try to tell you this Portal VST. But, um, back in the day when Travis was bringing, um, me and Thug on tour. Well, we all did a tour together, the Royo tour. And um, how the show was laid out was I would go out, do a set, like 30 minutes, 45 minutes. I think it was like 45. Then I would, uh, Thug would come out by a DJ for Thug. Then Trav would come out, Chase be a DJ for him. And they went back and forth all night. But um, it's like really that tour coming up, like it had it made, it like forced me, like I had a DJ type shit. So that really threw me into that and I'm grateful for that. And um, yeah, I started just DJing my own shows, uh, went on tours, a few other tours, a few other times. Uh, started doing residency in Vegas. I was DJing in Vegas like three times a week. Um, Yeah, but DJing and producing go hand in hand. Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. So it wasn't like it was just something <laughs> totally foreign where I just had to like figure out like, you know what I'm saying? It was just like really getting the technique of it down. But like you already know the movement, you already know what sounds hot. So like you know what I'm saying, and yeah. I al- I always been like entertaining, playing song playlists. So you know how to just keep the mood, like keep the shit like. <laughs> bro, I see one video of you, bro. It was on. Uh, damn, this was like I was like 15, bro. It was like I think 15. it was Dirty Sprite, and it was like Future showing Atlanta, and you was right there. And you remember you used to wear the headband and shit, bro. You was, <laughs> bro, you was t- yeah, you was hype as hell. Yeah, I remember that. Masquerade. Bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that shit was hot as hell. In the- <laughs> I remember that shit. That shit was so hot. Damn, oh is that shit God. even still open? Nah, I think they got like a new one. Or they changed something. but um, I don't think it's, it ain't the same no more. I think they made a new one. I yeah, might be wrong. Closed but- down everything. Yeah, shit crazy. But uh, yeah, you definitely had DJ energy. <laughs> yeah, bro, I see. Back then when I was younger, like, I don't know, bro. I used to be just way more, like, crazy with it, like, running around, like, j- just crazy energy with it. I don't know what happened, but, like, it ain't went all the way down. I'll still be hyped, but back then it was, like, nigga was really tripping. And you got to think, I came into doing shows, like, behind watching niggas like Trav every night, like, tripping, like, going insane. So I was like, oh, this is just how you got to do it. You feel uh-huh. me? So I feel like that was a part of it for sure. Fold it. So going on to the next question I seen on Twitter. I ain't gonna lie, your Twitter really be having sauce on there. You don't be, you don't be realizing. What you, you post, mean? Nigga, when you post them pictures, the FL, it's like a study class. You zoom in and see exactly what's going <laughs> on on the screen. <laughs> but I be, knowing, I be doing that on purpose. <laughs> yeah, for real. Yeah. You should got them. <laughs> be like producer, like community, like nigga be like too secretive. Like. Yeah. Because I remember when I was younger, like, Bro, I used to, I remember being young, being in high school, I used to dream of like what a nigga screen to look like. I used to like dream about what a nigga like a nigga like Lex, what his screen looked like. What you looking for? Hey, it's funny this nigga saying this shit. <laughs> bro. Remember we used to be in high school? Bro, bro, we used to got them go through 10 laptops cause we don't put a virus in our shit, trying to crack Nexus for the crime lead a nigga used to use. I got them. What's another Which shit? Which lead? You know, what's the, what's the lead from Nexus, bro? That this nigga used to use all the time. It was like the oh. cry lead. Yeah, it was like on Blood on the Money. It was like from one of them dance expansion packs. You know what I'm talking I about, I know bro. which one you're talking about. And yeah. this nigga talking about, yeah, bro, I couldn't find no sound. Like, bro, it was no tutorials back then on y'all niggas, bro. It wasn't, bro. And I, I be hip to that. And that's why, like, how I keep been taking the pictures of the screen. I've been mm-hmm. doing that because, like, I done been there. So I know niggas finna be like, but, like, that's what it's there for. Like, I'm not trying to. I want to do my part in service, like even to produce a community and just offer as much information as I can. Like I'm not trying to like hoard no information or like insecure about, oh, a nigga might come, you know what I'm saying? I feel like 
the producer community, I feel like it'd be a lot of that. It'd be too much like, mm. you know, just it'd be open now. It's it's more like the industry guys that be like that. Exactly. Maybe older guys. I'm gonna say that. I'm gonna say that. I ain't gonna put it on the whole community. I love y'all. I don't care. <laughs> but like, yes, you're right. That that part of it. Yeah, it'd be the industry. You know guys, what I'm saying? Be... Upcoming, I'd be seeing how everybody be helping each other and be like. Yeah, it's the older industry producer. But that'd be that insecurity. Yeah. Most they feel like they get it replaced, shit, so they're like, not trying to get. That's what it is. They feel like saying? they get it replaced. They don't want to give out their sauce, but it's like everybody can help everybody. I could show everybody. I could do a screen record or everything. How I do everything, but you're not gonna have my brain. Yeah. yeah, you know you what I'm saying. Like copy, it still might not even be the same. Like you know what I'm saying. Like it's it's like remakes. Like yeah. You ever listen to your remakes on YouTube before? Yeah, they sure. not the exact same as the actual beat at it's all. Like I was, bro. The day before yesterday. I got out the, uh, at the gym. I was watching. Might have been yesterday. I think it was yesterday. Some white boy. Shout out to him. And I done watched a few of them where they didn't do it. Like, uh, like, you know how YouTube, uh, they like suggest shit based off like your algorithm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So like, I done watched a couple like tutorials. Like they'll just be popping up new ones. It'll be like, this is how I make a heroes of villain type beat, like Metro type beat. So I've been watching, I done watched a few of them and I watched one yesterday. And he was doing it like it was a new beat, but the inspiration was walking down. And I was listening to it. And I was like, "This shit, I right. like this nigga, like you know." What I'm <laughs> so I be I be watching them. Yeah, I definitely fine. be watching them. That's like, fine though. That's fine. I fuck with it, man. I be watching them. That shit be hard, bro. I was watching one when I was got there getting the questions, and it was like how Metro make the signature melodies for uh for twenty one or some shit. Yeah, bro, I done just watched a couple of them too. Bro, right there he used this preset, and this the BPM that Metro likes to use, and. These are the drums. He used this drum from this kit. Yeah, they'll break it down. <laughs> I be like, God damn. I think it's supposed to be hacking FLPs they or something. Like, <laughs> they'll break it down. They'll be like, man, he usually likes he likes to use like this type of snare or, or this or that or that. I'll be like, damn. But how you know me? Yeah, that's it. Them niggas like listening, studying the same way I do. Same way I always have. So it's like, that's the beauty of it though. Like, I, I fuck with that. Yeah, yeah. I see from one of this, um, it's another pic that you had um, posted on Twitter, and I see the contact banks in there. We know contact is like, oh, this shit's dumb and expensive. So yeah. if you could recommend like one bank to the community that, you know what I'm saying, will set you straight overall, what bank would it be? Out of contact? Mm-hmm. Hmm. It's a lot, too. It's a lot of them motherfuckers, man. Then they just dropped another complete after. The one I got now, I bought like probably six months ago. And yeah, complete hard. another one, I'm like, I'm gonna stay on this one for a minute. Um, contact good bank. Hmm. I like that cloud one. Is straight. Is that what it's called? It might be called cloud. It might be cloud. Called. Is that the old? What's what the it, name? What that had like the A and the B. Yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. That should be cool. Like on some sense shit. Um, that that. Noir piano shit. Fire. I use that all the time. Shit fire. You know what I'm saying? That's 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 what I would suggest for sure. Uh hmm. It'd be some choir ones and shit I'd be using. I was gonna tell you choirs get east west. Yeah, of course. Come on now. East West. For sure. Come on now. <laughs> yeah, East West. East West been. This shit fire. They been I'm late on East West, bro. I just found out about this shit, bro. Like, I was tweaking. Y'all fuck with the Rolling Cloud? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Xenology. What's that? It's part of Rolling Cloud. Oh, it's in there? Yeah, Xenology. Damn. Shit fire. You probably using the SRX on shit. Yeah, that Rolling. one. And um, just a lot of the ones like from the keyboards and shit. Okay, okay, okay. So... Going on to this one, after watching the heroes and villains on um, with Morgan Freeman, like, could you see yourself like doing a movie? Yeah, definitely. I, I feel think. like that's one of the next parts of my life. For real? Yeah, for sure. And I don't, I ain't really talked about it probably ever or too much, but that's always been like something that I see. Like, I ain't gonna say after this because I'm always still do this. What I love to do, like, it's just my passion. But um. Like one of the next level up, levels up. Like, I love music, but I love movies too. You know what I'm saying? And just like producing like a hot song, a hot beat, or a hot song, a hot album. Like, it's all like mostly like taste level. You know what I'm saying? Like, I I try to make shit. I don't try to make shit for everybody. I just try to make shit that I like. 
Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Try to wow myself. So I feel like in film, it'd be hand in hand, like the same thing. I'm not going to say like it's going to be exact same or just easy or whatever, but like it's definitely something that interests me. Like even our generation, we ain't got like, like growing up, like how old, how old are y'all? 22. 23. Ah, damn. <laughs> All right, not too much. Nah, it's five though. <laughs> but like, man, when I was coming up, we had belly, we had paid in full, we had like, we had like, like we don't have them type movies no more. Like, we don't have none of that shit. Like, not even Friday. Like, we don't have none of that type shit no more. So it might be coming back. It's, it's not gonna, gonna be the same back. though. Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna come back. Like, I feel like we just we need more of that. Even baller blocking. I used to watch baller blocking. Oh. Uh, was camera and shit, killer season, like, you know what I'm saying? So, um, I definitely want to make movies, especially like horror movies, definitely that too. But like, I start off with like some, I don't want to say hip hop movies, but like, uh, just more stuff closer to our culture. But I can see you having like a, a hero villain show or movie or some shit. Like Black yeah. Lightning or some shit like that. Like, yeah, something like that. Yeah, I can, see, sure. I can see you doing something like that. Like, well, like, yeah. They nah. might be the 50 cent or the goddamn. <laughs> yeah, feel me? Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, it just, it just take just doing it. You know what I'm saying? Instead of talking about it, it just be like the execution. Like, Well, I need to talk to to get it done. You said, well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, what are the first steps I take? What's the first means I got to take? What's the, you know what I'm saying? How are we going to raise the money to, you know what I'm saying? Invest to do that to, you know? Cause just like producing the album and being like, yo, I like the way you play the drums, the way you play the keyboard, the way you do this. It's just like, just finding all them same type people, like, but on the film aspect. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and just putting it together. Just all about the vision. Producing really is just the vision. Like, what you see and how can you just execute on it? Mm-hmm. Like, making a beat. Like, I sit and think, like, what I'm trying to do or what I want to sound like and just how I could try to get as close to that as I can, you know? And I feel like it's the same as far as film. So it's just, yeah, for sure. If you could like go back and take all the music or a sound from a movie and do the film for it, what would it be? Like an old one? Any, any movie you pick. What you mean like? Like if you could film score a movie. Okay. What, what, what film would it be? Damn. That was a good one. That was a good ass one, bro. I love movies, so my brain just exploding. I give you a few on. Um, definitely, I can't say Kill Bill because Rizzo did that. Shout out, respect to Rizzo. Can't even touch that. But maybe some other Tarantino movie. Uh, hmm. Definitely some kind of scary movie, bro. Oh, that would be hard as fuck. You know, scary definitely movie. that. Yeah, yeah. for sure. I didn't expect that. That would be hard as fuck. Because you know how, like, traditionally it'd be, like, the music in them type movies, like, how it'd be, like, they have the strings and, like, just certain stuff, like, but it'd be dark. I always thought about, like, like if I was to do something like that, but just the same feeling of the music, but just use different shit. I just think if you're watching a scary movie and it's just crazy simps going off and mm-hmm. shit like that, but dark, I feel like it'd be fresh. Man, y'all come with some good ass questions. Y'all had that. I don't want that shit to feel like no quiz. <laughs> nah, it is, but now that's good though. Um, I just love so many movies, bro. Yeah, I mean, it's something you can pick for. You just said Man, scary movies. I feel like that's enough right there for real. Like, yeah, you said a whole drama scary so movies. Like, you know? Yeah, some horror shit for sure. Yeah, yeah. So the transition into like the producing stuff, like, I feel like the biggest question everybody want to know is like, when did the NPC come in? Cause like <laughs> I ain't gonna lie I knew he was gonna but talk he was about a million dollar worth of game bro I was like What? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <He said>, what? <laughs> I've been watching the live Bro you was You must You had to be in the house bro It was like during COVID 2020 You had the beard and everything Yeah But yeah. I was in the crib with the NPC <laughs> And I'm like Man this nigga been on NPC Like when did that come about? I say um, I say Whenever COVID first started Okay, so this shit is still new. Yeah, when COVID right, first sure. started. So it was like 2019. Um, I remember when I was young, maybe like eighth grade, I remember my mom bought me an NPC 1000 back then. And I would just like do little drum shit and shit on it. But I, ain't, I wasn't like 
making full beats or even like recording in the audio. They didn't even know how to do that. But I had just, I remember I had wanted it and it just inspired me. So she had got it. But, um, uh, but really locking in with it, it was at the top of COVID when it first started. And I was like, then it was just looking like we were just going to be in the house forever. So I was like, I had stayed in the house, watched a lot of movies and stuff. But at the same time, I was like, I need to come out the other end of this with a, some kind of new skill or some some new in my uh, arsenal, you know? So I had uh, just locked in with the 2000 XL. Um, took me like a day, like two days to kind of like just on YouTube and just stuff and really had got like a good idea, feel for a new, and you know, that's one of the older ones. So it really ain't even that many, much stuff on there to like, I feel like it was a good entry point for me. Um, So I had just locked in with that. And that's how Savage Mode 2, like mostly all of that was, was off of there. That makes sense because it was a whole different sound of Metro on there. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that make a lot of sense right there. Like running shit like that, like shit yeah. really hitting, like really Damn, punching. That really, makes, that makes sense. It's like more of a round sound. Like, you know, it's it's like hardware and circuits and shit. Yeah, it was a switching saying? drums on that too. Like, yeah. it was a whole different from like... Yeah, more of a swing. That yeah. shit was like, just more movement. I mean, same with this album. I made most of the album with that too. Like. Mm. Mostly a lot of shit since then, but I still use FL a lot or go back and forth. Or I might do some shit in FL, bounce it out and finish it in there and then put it back in FL. Um, yeah, man, I love, it's just, it just, it inspired, it re-inspired me and just made shit more fun again. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause I, I started making beats when I was 13. I'm 29, so like, and I'm always make beats on my laptop too. But just after a while, I'm not even gonna say it got to a point where I was like, it didn't get to that point to where I was bored or nothing, but it's like, I'm glad I did that because it added a new spark. It made it feel like new again. Like, I gotta learn shit. I could just, more room to grow. Like you could grow more, like, you know, type shit. It's like if you bench pressing and you get to bench press 100 and don't never go up past that. Like you just gonna just stay doing that. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, just take some on and uh, just more room to grow. Now I be using like, I still use the 2000 XL, but um, shout out to Sonny. He had, well first, it was my birthday. Shout out to Timberland. He had sent me a, a NPC Live 2 for uh, my birthday. So, and it was mobile, it had a speaker. So that really made me curious. So then I had started uh, fucking with that too. I was like, damn, the new one's cool too. When I was on my old one, I was like just in love with it. I was like, man, I ain't using that new shit. That's, you know, like a computer in a box. Mm -hmm. But then all the stuff you could do with the new ones, like I'm glad I got put on this Sunday. It was like, man, you really got to fuck with the X. And I, I, it's crazy. I went to the store to go buy an X. I went to go buy two of them, one for my brother and one for me, well, for his birthday. Then I came home and I had realized that I had one on the fucking stand that had been there for like three or four years. So... I started fucking with the X and that got even more stuff because it's bigger. And that shit was just, it's just fun, bro. Like, but I still use FL on Mac. I still use FL on PC. I still use the old NPC. I still use the new ones. So just mix it all up, put it all together. So you would say like NPC gives you more like a live feel than FL? Yeah, it's fun. I mean, it's just fun, bro, to uh -huh. like actually like just feel mm -hmm. what you're doing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I love using FL too still. You know what I'm saying? But it just to like, and it make you approach shit differently. You're just going to approach shit different. You might approach the bounce different. You're going to approach everything different just off of feeling. It. You know what I'm saying? It's just a whole different, I notice I just approach beats differently. Like mm -hmm. that. So. I feel like when you like click in beats, you probably think you need like all these elements and stuff. But if you actually like listen to or just feel like the feeling of the beat, it's like maybe this shit done. You know what I'm saying? Like, all right. Cause clicking or like, and I love clicking. I'm not one of the niggas who be hating on clicking. <laughs> Come on, that's how we came in. That's, that's how we still rock a lot. I'm not one of them. I'm not one of them. <laughs> but <laughs> it's just a fact that maybe not for everybody else, like y'all younger and shit, but like, after doing it for so long, like I said, from 13 to 29, it's like, 
you can easily psych yourself out into like just a routine of doing the same thing and just like flying through it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Cause it's like, you're just so used to it. So just mm-hmm. even the muscle memory and everything, and everything. So it's like, when I make beats on the NPC, it'd be just like, it just be different every time. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Cause it's always gonna be a different tempo, a different key, just a different feeling. Like the music just gonna move you a certain type of way. And I feel like for so long and so many producers, I feel like we let just being unfamiliar with them type of things intimidate us into not trying to fuck with it or not trying to learn it. You know what I'm saying? And we be selling ourselves short. Like, once I figured out how quick it was for me to really get going and get flying on the NPC, I was like, damn, I should do this shit years ago. Mm-hmm. You know, but God ain't mean for it to go like that. He meant for for me to do that at that point in COVID. But it's just like, that's why I just be wanting to share the knowledge and let other producers know, like, you know, go for that shit, fuck with that shit. It ain't, it ain't, uh, it ain't like trying to read Chinese and that shit really like, you know what I'm saying? You could learn it. You could easily learn it. You gotta think like, really what we do today, a lot of that is a lot more complex, slick. Mm-hmm. All the computer shit and plugins and this and all this finesse, 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 like, this shit they was using in the 90s. You know, not downplaying the 90s at, at all, but, they had a lot less technology. You feel me? But, um, and the new NPCs is fun. They got the touch screen shit. They got a lot more shit you could do. A lot more memory. That's why I really fuck with that NPC X I got now because my engineer shot Ethan, he had put uh, a four terabyte drive inside my shit. Like, it could open the bottom, put like a, so I just got so much shit just in there and that shit be ready to go. Versus the old one, like, nigga, I be having floppy disk plug in that motherfucker. Small memory, small sample time, but I still like it because it make you, you know, the limitations just push you to mm-hmm. approach shit different. So I just like to mix it up because it. Man, say you put a four terabyte in there, but I got too much shit in there. Man, listen, bro. <laughs> four terabyte, I got, bro, so much shit in there. And that shit just right there, load up fast, instantly, like. See, I ain't know with the NPC. But I, I'm not talking about the older ones, but I know when I, we did the Sunny interview, he was making a couple beats with the um, NPC and I was playing with it. Like, I ain't know you put like VSTs on there. I seen Mellotron and shit. Yeah, why like, you asked fuck? about VSTs earlier, I was thinking about some NPC VSTs because they got some, actually five VSTs. They that's just hard. dropped a couple more ones that's crazy too. Like oh, effect and look. sound. They got hard sounds in there, bro. Like I be making whole beats in there. Like I'll just plug up a MIDI controller to my shit. I might just do, just lock in a fast drum pattern like groove and then just play shit on top of it and make crazy beats. Just all NPC sounds like out of, they got real VSTs. And you know, like we was talking earlier, like talking about stock shit. Like, no, they got real like VSTs they made that sound good as fuck, bro. Like, yeah. that shit surprised me. I had to flow with NPC, man. I didn't expect them sounds to sound good like that, like how they did. If you watching it, man, send your boy song. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You boy, one of them, please. Yeah. <laughs> like to fuck with though. I ain't gonna lie. For sure. Yeah, we got a short intermission break. Hell yeah, me too, though. I've been holding them on too. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> uh, shit. But now the MP's hard, bro. Y'all gotta fuck with this shit. No, nah, I, I fuck with it, though. Like, we was going to Guitar Center and just, you know, they be having one. You know how they got a little studio to set up? Yeah. We'll just be in there just playing with the shit when we were not buy it. <laughs> you need to go buy it, bro. Yeah, I got hella sense. You be fucking with analog gear? Hell yeah, for you. I was fucking with analog gear before the NPC. I feel like that's what, um, that's what pushed me like my curiosity more towards the NPC. Mm-hmm. Cause we started fucking with the analog gear like first started fucking with since maybe twenty seventeen, eighteen, something like seventeen. It yeah, probably like twenty seventeen, and um. Just me just noticing night and day, just the difference of how the sounds was and just mm-hmm. how much more heavy and warm they were. And I was always doing that, but I would just record them and like record the sounds in the FL and still like do the drums and all that in the FL, which was still hard. But I was like, whip the sounds was from the hardware and the drums too, like what that shit was. So that's what made me start fucking with that. But yeah, the sense is crazy. 
I fuck with the Sims, bro. I mean, I just got hit on the Sims like last year. I ain't gonna lie. I'm sitting here talking like I've been there about them shit. I just got nah, but, you still still like, but listen, bro, it's never too late. Like, it's never too late, bro. Yeah, I don't got a cover, bro. Cover, got a little profit. Yeah. Grandmother. That profit for sure. Yeah, your yeah. profit grandmother. I got a Moog Sub 37. Yeah. Yeah. Shit's hard, though. You fuck with shit. I fuck with those. I fuck with um, profit all the day. Smith shit hard. Um, I really like my old, like, I guess these keyboards, like the Phantoms. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I got a Jupiter X. That's really what I look used for a lot of shit. A Jupiter X. Um, I want like an old, old one, like something like that, like DX7 or something, like some real old. Yeah. You gotta get the maintenance and all this shit, right, bro? This shit, bro. Yeah, yeah. I fought with Mellotron. Mellotron crazy. You know, that shit dry as hell, but that shit. That <laughs> <laughs> motherfucker's bone dry. But like, it's hard because you get to, you know, dress it up. You know, you gotta dress it up. Yeah, yeah. You fought with the VST, Mellotron? Yeah, they got a Mellotron VST in the um, NPC. I be using that. Yeah, I fuck with that. You can put like your own one shots and audio files in there and shit. Like, that shit hard. Oh, on the VST? Yeah. Man, I wonder if you could do that on the other one. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure because I, I, know, I know the Mellotron, you talking about the NPC. It's the full yeah. Mellotron. You should be able to put your own shit in there. Man. You can put like one shot files in there type shit and like. And just play it like a sound. It's like a VST. That's how that's how a lot of people make like analog lab or like Mellotron banks. They put like their own one shots in there and then use like the the pedals. Yeah, that's how they be doing this shit. It remind me of contact. Like I remember, uh, Kino coming up. I looked up so many producers, but even like Shotty Red, D Rich, and how much they was going in on like the Phantom. I remember back then, Sunday. I tell you, bro, we used to use a uh, contact had. I don't know if somebody had made like really a contact bank, but like with them keyboards with all the sounds. And they was like, like so all them sounds I used to hear on them Jeezy songs and everything I could never have or find, it was in there, bro. We was abusing them bitches. <laughs> <laughs> and they go crazy with the horns and everything. Yeah, the horns, the even hits. the stents, the, the little staffs, the little boop, 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 like all that shit, bro. That shit. I was just thinking recently, like, man, I got to find them shits. Like, they don't want my laptop somewhere, but them shits are hard. So going back, you said early in the interview, you were cooking up with FL21. I got to ask, Rick, we talk about this all the time, and we got to solve this shit. So like, I already know you, man. You know? <laughs> come on, let's do it. I already know I mean, it's going to come today, too. First off, before I ask, what's your favorite FL? I don't really think that matters, because like, I feel like FL, with the upgrades, is just really just the workflow getting better. But like, let's talk about the sound, the sound thing, though. Right. Like, is it's it true? Different. Is it not? It's different, bro. <laughs> I'm gonna just tell you. You know you're gonna have a YouTuber on there who'll be like, it's no, different. it's wrong. They can say what they want. <laughs> they can say what they want. That's like, it ain't even no shade. That's like, maybe an aspiring doctor on YouTube is telling a fucking neuroscientist, a brain surgeon, like, no, he's wrong. No, he's. But what you doing though? Not even no shade, but I'm just being real. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I done studied. It's a difference, bro. I got ears. You know, I got great ears. Like, it's a difference. And that don't mean it's bad. I feel like niggas get offended because they feel like it's bad. It's not bad. The new FLs, like, sound-wise, the sound is more polished, which isn't bad. Like, it sound better, really. You know, but, like, my favorite FL is 10. I'm 1121. The workflow and the features on all the new ones are better, but it's a different sound, bro. Like, on FL 10 or 11, you could... 10, 11, 11 and 10 and under... You when you push the sound like more closer to the red, like to um to like closer to the distortion and clipping, it make the sound like I don't know. It's some it's some in the program and the sound design of it where it's like it distort without sounding like fucked up distort. It's just like man, this shit thumping like how Southside beat sound. That's a perfect example. That's, cause every time scissors make it be, it's loud as hell. But that's why that shit hitting like that. It's, um, it's just all on preference, bro. Like, I like that FL10. That's my favorite one. But I like that one for doing certain shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I'm doing Savage Mode or some shit like that, that's the one I need to use. Cause this shit is hitting harder mm -hmm. than, you know what I'm saying? But like, 
even on After Hours on Weekend album, I did some of that shit was FL10, but some of that, like one or two of them songs was uh, fucking off of Mac. But like he do R&B, it's like more polished, like right. it's more clean, like the sounds and stuff, like it sound like, what? it sound great. It ain't even no shade to it, it sound great. It's just like, what you doing? Like I'm doing some R&B shit, I'm probably just gonna do it on my Mac. Mm. I'm trying to just do, I do a lot of rap shit on there too. If I'm just doing like this shit that need that certain type of thump, like 2014, 15, like metro type shit, like I gotta use the old shit because it's not gonna sound the same. And like, it took me a while to realize that, like, we had started Savage Mode 2, and we was in the studio every day, like when we first, first started. I was just making beats on the, on the, um, on the fucking, on the Mac, on the Mac FL, FL20. I had just got done um, doing the weekend shit. I was 20, so I was just already in the vibe on that. So I kept making beats every day. I'm just wondering, I'm like, how this shit not like, like even when he recorded the beats, I'm like, this shit not like, it took me a while to even wake up and realize that it was, it was just the sound of it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I be seeing niggas argue about this all the time online. They be, they be put their life on the line for that shit. They be, too, them niggas really get mad. Yeah, I'm not saying nothing's wrong with it at <laughs> all, bro. It's just like... Of course it's going to sound different, though. That's like saying, like, the iPhones don't have no differences. You feel me? It's like... <laughs> it's like, like... You think they updating it for too, no bro. reason? Like, it don't even matter, though. <laughs> I know we post that shit for engagement, right? <laughs> <Just> like, <laughs> but, it's, but it's... But I'm just here to tell niggas, you get mad, it's one million percent of difference. But that's okay, bro. It's okay. You know what's funny what you said, though? It's funny how we act, we we say yeah F L ten eleven twenty like twelve ain't never exist. Oh, yeah, Can 12. we agree that shit with ass? Yeah. <laughs> I don't even I don't even think I ain't never had that. One. <laughs> I promise you, bro. When they kept upgrading, like, I never went past ten. Bro, it was so hard I never heard back then, 12. bro. I ain't get a license till like twenty nineteen, bro. So I got to a point. I'm like, bro, every F L that come, I'm not finna refine the crack, bro. I just thought with 12 for a hot day. And when I had bought the one for Mac some years ago, you know, you get lifetime updates. So that's why the other, like, a couple weeks ago, I was like, fuck, I'm finna update this 21. Like, I ain't got to pay for it or nothing. That shit hard. I feel like 21 sound better than 20. They tweaked it. They for sure tweaked it. Like, it ain't hit, it don't, it's not the same as 10, because, I mean, you could tell it's not meant to be the same. Like, if you're a software developer, why the hell are you trying to make your software in 2023 sound the same as that damn 2009 or something. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, you always trying to... So even uh, 21 sound better than 20. It definitely, like, it got more of that punch back in it. Like, the beats I've been making, they've they been harder, and, like, they, they hit harder than it was on that 20. Like, the sound definitely... They tweak some. They for sure tweak some. Shout out to FL. Shout out to FL, man. Image Line. I haven't really sure. fucked with 21 yet, but... You got to fuck with it, bro. I just ain't like hiding the playlist. They do that little fade shit, bro. Like, mm, and you don't like, you can turn that off. Yeah, but sometimes I want it on, though. It just depends. <laughs> you can turn mind. it on. Like, no, 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 but I'm saying, like, sometimes... Man, sometimes you want that shit on there. And sometimes you let it hard. And I ain't made beats on, on Mac in a minute, but till 21 came out, that's all I've been doing every day. Like, that shit hard, bro. They got new... Uh, Got some cool new effects with it. Like the vintage chorus. They got um Yeah, that shit crazy. That shit hard. They got a new reverb. That's crazy. The uh I think it's called Lux Verb. Oh, I ain't know about that one. Yeah, they, re they reverb game. serious. I'm game. telling you, bro. You gotta watch the video where it show you everything they changed in 21. I was just like, Bro, you can really learn a lot of shit from that too. I watched the whole shit. So I was like, you could tell like this time they really like they listen to niggas like. The community, like they, they, they tapped in on this one for sure. They definitely taking feedback into consideration. I see they did. They, they ain't no way they didn't this time because like a lot of shit that I've been wanting them to do, like they just did that shit. I see Ableton got scared. Oh, that one. That's probably what. It was. <laughs> <laughs> hey, like, hold on, these niggas out there. Hold on. I said these young ass company coming up. <laughs> I gotta yeah, get right. Ableton on that ass. You yeah. should have been right. unbeatable. You would have got you a license if you would have won. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, see, shout out to FL. Shout out to FL, For man. For sure. But yeah. But, okay, now we're going to get into some more producer questions. But, like, it's going to be, like, general producer questions. So, how do you know when a record is timeless? Like, for example, like, Knife Talk. That song was originally for, like, Savage Mode 2. 
um, first off, like holding a song for that long and not getting tired of it. Like you obviously got to know that the record is like something that you could play like continuously for like 10, 15 years. So how do you know about like timeless songs? As far as like mm, saying timeless songs, just making albums and, and shit, like doing these projects over the past, uh, I say decade. Um, just one of the th biggest things I've learned over doing it over and over again in trial and error is uh, you just got to, everything got to fit. You know what I'm saying? Everything got to fit. Uh, it just got to make sense. Just because a song don't make it onto this album don't mean it's any less better than the rest of these. You know what I'm saying? And not saying that that song wouldn't fit on that album because it definitely did. Like, it was for that album. But um, we knew it was still a banger. We still put it out on some coming up. Like, it was going to be an intro to, like, just one of the next things we did because we did that song. It was going to be the intro to Savage Mode 2. So then we had did Running along the way, and that ended up being, like, the new like intro type thing. And like the original one, like the intro to it was longer, how these strings, it was a lot more cinematic. So it was just like, in my mind at the time, I was like, man, if this song ain't first, I don't really see where else it could go in the track list. Mm -hmm. Where it could still, like, where it could really get like its proper shine. Cause just the wrong timing, the wrong placement of a song and sequence or anything could like stun its growth. So I be just trying to maximize the growth of every song. So it's like, okay, we're just going to use that for one of the next things we do and just have it first. But um, it's Drake ended up hitting up, bro, and, you know, had fuck with the song. I guess Savvy had sent it to him or something. So, uh, but, you know, it worked out like that. You know, it was God. So it, it just, I feel like the music always going to just make it where it's supposed to go. Mm. What you feel like it's like the main difference though with making those type of records because like we could play got them we could play skyfall if you let's say you never drop let's say skyfall never dropped and we dropped right now could probably wouldn't tell 10 years ago you feel me like yeah you know what i'm saying like okay so you're saying like yeah like how do you make music because like this is my opinion but like we're in a time now with like some beats. I'm not saying every beat, but you know, like we're in a time where like a lot of beats sound the same and stuff like that. You know, we have the Southside clones, the Metro clones, the Wheezy clones, and stuff like that. Um, so you asking, you asking how? Like when making a timeless record, like what's the difference between why 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 is a record like that you made ten years ago could still be played now to where records now that drop. It's like after two weeks, you don't want to hear you no hear something else. Cause we was just having fun. We were we wasn't trying to be nobody else. We weren't trying to emulate nobody. We weren't. Oh, yeah. That's what it be for real. The vibe. Yeah, it be the vibe too. So it's like if you Weezy got his sound. If you another upcoming producer and you making beats just like Weezy, and then it come out, and it's just like, all right, that was cool, but we got Weezy. And you're not going to be Wheezy better than Wheezy. You feel me? So, like, it's just different now with the internet. I feel like, and it's not even just for producing. It's for rap, too. Just all music, like the internet and the accessibility of things. It's more of a blurred line between professionals and amateurs. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, uh, one of the biggest artists could get a beat off of YouTube, uh, $25 license or just anything, and that shit could take off. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a blessing that anybody could get in or could, but it's not really like, it's not a producer's fault. Like, they post to, you post to be trying to like, you know what I'm saying? Get to that shit. But I just feel like it's less of a like, uh, quality control on shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So like, a lot of shit are just, I put this. I'm not trying to shit on nobody at all, but I'm just like, it's just what I be peeping, you know? Um, Man, you trying to play it nice, bro. This, this the master class right now. This, nice this, this ain't an interview, nigga. This ain't a podcast. Nah, this the master bro. class. Because I'm not trying to get up here and like, you know what I'm saying? 
We don't want a hate train. I see what you say. I, see what you say. <laughs> yeah. I fuck with niggas. Yeah. I really fuck with niggas. You know what I'm saying? I love the young producers. That's why I wanted to do this. That's why I be taking pictures of my screen. Like, I want to drop the gems because I want everybody to be better. Uh-huh. Genuinely. You know what I'm saying? Like, when everybody else going hard out here, shit, that, that motivate me to be like, I be wanting to hear other songs and beats to where, like, oh, shit. Like, what? I be wanting that feeling because... That feeling is what got me here today, like being young and being in high school and listening to everybody I looked up to and like just hearing the shit and it just make you like, oh, I got to go hard. I got to, you know, but um, I feel like we just in a weird place right now, which is cool. Like every industry I always go through it, you know, but um, I wouldn't even blame the producers because they doing what they supposed to do. You supposed to try to get your placements, get your money, get your... I feel like a lot of artists are really like, not even just artists, but artists and like labels and companies, they taking advantage of the fact that they could use some 17 year old in a room beat and just fucking get them a, a fucking- dollars. You know what I'm saying? Get them a, a, a work for hire contract or something and just <laughs> buy the right style they beat and all that shit and just like, you know what I'm saying? I feel mm-hmm. like they just taking advantage of, of being able to just get over like that. You know, instead of like it being like more just like professional sounding like sound and shit everywhere. That's like if in the NBA, like you didn't have to like or even NFL niggas ain't have to like try out or work out or like make it to a team. Like you could just like join the team. Now, like, would all the games be as competitive or as thrilling or fun anymore? Mm-hmm. Like if Steph was out there just playing some niggas out there who just got in. Type. You know what I'm saying? But um Like I said, I'm not trying to show niggas at all, bro. No, I feel you. I you know what I'm saying? But, yeah. um... Man, you said it like we just in a weird place. Right it's just now. weird, bro. And, yeah. you know, even besides the whole taking advantage thing, I feel like everybody just, like... I don't know. Everybody trying to figure out. Like, don't nobody really know what to do. So it's like everybody just looking at each other and just, like... You know, I'm going off of you. You going off of me. Yeah, exactly. So, so it's just like, like we're not really going nowhere. I don't feel like producers need to take a little like lead with the music direction. Like for your album, like you know, how people say like you say 2022 with the, with the album, but you know what I'm saying? Like you switched it up. Like I feel like producers take the lead a little bit more with the songs and stuff. I agree. We get something different. You know I mean? agree. I agree a million percent. That's why I like instead of me being in the studio with people talking about it or feeling the way about it, it's just like. I got to get back to just putting music out again and just got to, like, do it. Like, I can't just sit around and talk about it and then don't do nothing. Let's say you got to get back in the studio. All right, that leads to the next question. This is all at the bottom of the list, too, but you got to bring it up. In 2017, it was in the middle of a run. Like, every song that had the Metro tag on it, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, what made you just, I'm going to retire in a legendary run like that? Man, being young, being emotional, being... Mm. Halfway in my feelings, like, hmm. it was a few things. One thing I feel like, and it's a good question. I feel like I had got to, it had got to the point, bro, I promise you, and I'm not even exaggerating, like, every single week we had a song or some songs coming out every week. <laughs> Like, nigga, every single week at one point. So I just felt like, and like I said, I'm a student in game, so I done watched this show so many times before on just with producers and people don't really care about you or maybe even your sound like that. They just trying to, like, use, like. Hear your sauce. Yeah, like, really don't give a fuck. It's like, oh, you the guy that's in right now? Let's get some beats. So it was just like, making a conscious decision, like, I'm not gonna let y'all spread me thin like that. You know, like, I wanna be here on some forever shit. So that was part of it. I just felt like they were just too, I ain't want them to just be that accessible, like, just that, like, it was just a lot. It was fire, though, for sure, but it was just like, it got to the point, man, songs coming out, I ain't, 
hurt he should hurt him you know what i'm saying but like it was that it was how everybody had reacted to the big shine album i just started to feel like more underappreciated so i was like okay fuck it y'all got it you know what i'm saying y'all finna have to out them want me to come back or just feel how I feel without my presence in this. You know what I'm saying? Just so you just know the difference. So, um, and there was some other personal shit in my life too. This is all at the same time. Yeah. So there's some more personal shit in my life that had happened. And um, it was a phone call I got. It was some crazy shit. And that's when I had put the retired for rap shit up. I was like, man, you know what? Even though even that whole time, I never stopped working. I was still in the studio every day, but I was just like, just making music. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Still making songs, still making albums worth of shit with niggas. But like, I was just cool for a minute. And uh, I remember it, I was in the studio every day too still, every day. So one day my, uh, my manager Cash, he had walked in and he was like, He's like, bro, you gotta put like an album or something together. This is how the first heroes came. He was like, you gotta get back, you gotta fucking do something. So I was like, all right, cool. And that's how I did the first heroes. But then I still fell back after that because I was just on some, we gonna make album shit. I really wasn't still making like nigga songs and shit. But I've been wanting to get back into like that type of thing for a long time. That's why I really wanted to get this album out, The Heroes and Villains. So now, I feel like I have fun again, like back then, and just do songs and just mm-hmm. work with niggas. I always been doing songs, but like do songs to release and on other people's albums, and you know. But just young, bro. Just I learning. feel you. Just yeah. I mean, it's a couple of things I want to go from this. So like, first thing you were saying, like a lot of songs you ain't even hear yet. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think a lot of producers just think like. If you the new producer don't really have a brand, you getting fucked in the industry the whole time. Bigger producers still be going through bullshit too. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, do you still be going through some book? Well, you probably don't go through no bullshit now. But like yeah. back then, like 2017, 2018, even 2020, like was you going through bullshit with business? It still be. I mean, I'm not gonna say business, but it's always gonna be some bullshit because that's just always. life. Uh-huh. I don't care how, what Elon Musk still deal with some bullshit. You it's always right. gonna like. It's always gonna be some new challenge to conquer. Or like a little roadblock and you just gotta think and figure out it's all you never gonna escape that uh, but um I just feel like back then too like I just cause now like this long in it I understand more of a like this is like a business at the end of the day it's a business no matter what you say yeah this is a job it's less formal than somebody wearing a suit and tie clocking in 9 to 5 it's less formal than that but Cause people in the studio and people drinking and smoking and your friends are here and all this shit. Like we forget that this is all still a business at the end of the day. So like, I was still understanding it was a business back then, but I feel like it be you be having to remember that. But I'm fully aware of that now, so it's just like I don't let my feelings or emotions get into none of that, and that was influencing some of my decisions. You know what I'm saying? But um. Uh, I ain't get away from the question, you know, would you? No. No, no that was it. The other one I want to follow up or was? Uh, I was going to say, I do want to say, though, I think that it, like, added an increase to your value, and I think that's what helped, like, expand your brand. What, like, um... The fallback. That's why I was thinking. It was like a strategic fallback, but you it know... Was. The world don't know your plan, so a fallback will look like a fall off. You know what but I'm saying? But you knew Just, what you was doing. Mm. But of course I knew what I was doing. Make like, yourself exclusive. Right. I had to think about it because I done seen so many and we only have to say no names, no shit. But just even before our generation, just history of like a hot producer and what always happened. Like I said, I'm a student in the game, bro. I study this shit to a T, dot the I, like study this shit. So it's like, it's always, it'll be a hot producer. And of course you get on and all these people are calling you, all the biggest are, everybody's calling you. And of course you're gonna pick up for everybody, of course you're gonna try to do everything, but it's like, it's like they just use you up, burn you up, burn everything out, and just like, all right, what's next? You know, and I, I didn't want that to happen. Even if niggas tried to, I wouldn't let that happen, cause I'ma never stop, you feel me? But I was just like, niggas, 
like I said earlier, I started to feel like a underappreciation for like my art and like my craft and what I really put my heart into. I started to feel like it was just getting too like, it's like Amazon or something. Like this shit just yeah, like fucking, too accessible. you know what I'm saying? Like, and niggas can't feel like that. So I just wanted to put more like a, just like give it some time, work on my craft some more, um, and just come back into it like the right way mm. type shit. And now it's like, okay. That was like my first leg. I look at it now for like drop this album and I'm starting like my second leg and fucking with shit and doing more songs and albums and you know. Yeah, you been very like strategic with your career. And I was gonna talk about this, but you had brought it up, the big shine with yeah. the album. Like I didn't really see like what's your thought on it now looking back, it's been a couple of years. Like what's your yeah. thought on that album? Cause I thought it was like it was different. It was different from, you know, the future or what a time to be alive. Like what's your thoughts? I on feel it? like they just wanted that. Or they wanted like me to get a big shine, just a whole bunch of like street beats or like mm -hmm. right. just do something like that. And it wasn't what niggas thought it was gonna be. So I feel like they was just like, oh, what the fuck? You know, and um, shout out to Shine, it's my boy. I also feel like, especially at that time, I feel like he got, he got a lot of like unfair, like just kind of like criticism and hate type of thing. Yeah, he did though. Cause when I think of Shine, like lyric, like lyrics wise, I think of like Kendrick and Cole, but people won't try to bro. put them there. Right. You, no? you can't even deny it. So like, me as a producer, like I was excited when me and him. That's that album still hard as fuck to me. It's like, hard to I know me it's too. hard. It's just a different sound. You know what I'm saying? So it's like it came out. I just feel like and music was in a different time. But I feel like if we had held that album and dropped it right now, niggas would be like, "Oh, this fuck. shit hard as fuck." You right. know what I'm saying? Right. But just the time. Think about music at the time. You know, niggas was just like, "The hell you on?" Like, you know, niggas want to always just keep you boxed in or box you in. Or, mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I still stand by that album. Like, we had a lot of hard, solid songs. Like, just even the concept, everything for it all around. So, and just my whole career up to that point, it's like, that album in my career, I say it was the point of like, <coughs> you know, when they got a superhero like Batman or something, or Spider-Man, like how they always love them in the beginning because they need them. And they do one thing wrong. Yeah, not even do it wrong. Like they'll champion you until it's like you saving the day so much it gets to the point where it'd be like, nah, fuck that nigga. Type shit. Like Batman, they went through that shit. Spider Man, like really all them heroes are like even LeBron. Not saying niggas be like, fuck LeBron. It's like we love you coming up when you get too big. It's like they get the most hate. You get right. the most hate, you the most hated basketball player. You feel me? And the most love. Like and it's like for what? Like what is he done wrong? No, mm -hmm. that's what I mean, though. Like, you don't do nothing really wrong, but it's yeah. wrong in their eyes because it's not what they want it to be. Like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? So it's like the Big Sean thing just had me, like, I started to feel that. That's why I feel like it was really a blessing in disguise that that even went down like that because I was like... It was an eye-opener. Yeah, it's time to pull it back. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's time to pull it back. So, um, yeah, but i always been strategic with everything in my career, bro. Like... Um, but now I'm to the point to, I'm still gonna be st strategic, but just have more fun now and like not overthink or overplan too much shit. Like I know when to turn that button on or not to, you know, just to do some shit and put it out. Like do a project in a week or two weeks and put it out type shit. Like, mm -hmm. cause then be serious vibes too. All right, so I seen in your interview with the Full Sin podcast, you were talking about sometimes how you're like bias with your beats and I feel like that's something we need to touch because every producer can relate to that shit. Yeah. It'll always be that beat in the pack you send and you play the first three hard ones and you're like, oh, you gonna feel this shit and then nigga be like, next. And then you get to that loud one it's like, oh, bro, what you mean? <laughs> next, next, next. Like, man, I thought I was gonna come and kill this shit. Yeah, that you know shit what I'm happened to this day. This shit still happened, you know? But like, and on full scene, when I meant bias, I meant like, cause we was talking about Karate Chop. Um, I wasn't even talking about bias, like this is the one I fuck with. Like, I wasn't fucking with the song at first because I didn't like the beat. Like that type of bias, like bias against it. Like, you know, you know you have certain beats where you feel like, I don't know, it just, I don't know, I'm just particular. So it just with anything in life. So it might just be one little thing or something about the beat I don't like. 
and it could just rub me the wrong way or I could not like see the full vision of it cause I'm stuck on this one thing that's throwing me out. You know what I'm saying? Like, but yeah, uh, bias towards the beach. Like, you know, our beats are babies. So we all got the beats we love, the ones we feel like the ones, the ones mm-hmm. that we feel like is cool. And you never know, cause a lot of beats that I thought was just cool would have been like some of my biggest songs type right. shit. So it'd be like, I always go by my ear, but I also understand that that's not the end all be all. And it's billions of people with so many different brains and taste levels and just all kind of shit. So it'd be interesting. What's a session that you'll never forget? Like you can remember it clear right now. Yeah, a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of them. Like a lot of people don't even understand, even with all the times I wasn't putting out music or on the scene or nothing like, I was still in the studio every day, every day making songs, every day just making beats, every day pulling up on niggas recording, every day having niggas pull up and record. So, hmm, I'm trying to think of a song, a session I'll never forget. <laughs> Damn. <coughs> you probably got a whole bunch. Probably no, got, literally. Probably can't talk about half of them shit. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> But it's a lot of them, bro. Like, mm, it's like my brain is exploding. It is 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 like Skyfall. The vibe and the energy of that session is that like rare or like that's usually what it is most of the nah, time. That's how I be. A lot of the time, I'm not gonna say every day is like exactly like the Skyfall video, but like as a producer, more than just making beats, but actual producer in the studio, like you and the artist supposed to like bounce off of each other like it's a it's a collaboration like mm-hmm. it's a how can we both put our heads together and get out the best shit we can today or execute this idea the best make it come to life mm-hmm. the best you know so um a lot of times it'd be like that um i remember when thug was recording his verse for skyfall he did his verse a different day but the same studio same room dark where we used to be and uh I remember playing him the song. He was fucking with that shit hard. So by the time later on the day, it was time for him to do his verse. I remember he was, uh, cause I was, I was with him in the booth the whole time. We just both sitting down. And that nigga was like, it's like he was asleep, but recorded that whole, his whole part on Skyfall, he recorded, he was asleep, bro. And that shit still sounded crazy. Like, I'll yeah, never forget hard. that. Like, I'm watching him, and um, I'm thinking I'm about to have to try to, like, wake him up, uh, Every time, like, shout out Alex, engineer, every time it would come back in to, like, where he was punching that, like, you could see this nigga clearly sleep, but he's so one with the music. Like, how I be feeling one with the music. He's so one with the music. He'll, like, you'll think he's really sleep. And then soon, like, right on time when someone to come in, he'll be like, look me inside of my eye. And then just go back down. <laughs> And then he did that whole That's song crazy. like that, bro. And I was just watching it. I'm like, bro, ain't no way, bro. Like, how you know to wake up, like, right on a, like, a nigga <laughs> really be, like, sleep. Like, not like a nigga just, like, chilling tired. But, like, no, bro, your head down, your eyes closed. Like, but you waking up to record, like. That's I true. I just read that. You know what I'm saying? But, like, Thug is really a true artist and, like, really one with the music, like. Tell my stories I'll never forget. It's like, damn near every time I ever done recorded with him, like it's something like he's one of he's one in a trillion for real, bro. I know this is random. Can you tell us like some studio feels? The reason why I bring this up, can you talk about Thug? And I'm, I'm thinking of all the engineer stories with Thug in my head and shit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but like what's some studio feels? Like a lot of people be thinking, like, you know, nervous in the studio. You know, like producers be like introverts, you know what I'm saying? Not, yeah. You know, so like. Have you ever had a situation where it's been like a cringe situation or like, ooh, man, it was something on here telling us one time, hit laptop A work, like it be A turn on in the session or something. For real? Yeah, I think it was YC. YC laptop was tripping and money <laughs> bad rocking nigga on a laptop. Yeah, yeah. For real? Yeah, yeah. Like, what's the studio feel you've been through? Studio feel? Yeah. Oh, shit. That's a good one. I fuck with that. Hmm. Okay, you get out of it. That's a good one. <laughs> Damn, I want to give you a good one. I'm trying to think. Studio fail. 
Um, <laughs> you see the best version he made when I said thug stories? Like, he doesn't see <laughs> Oh, yeah. yeah thug, I can't tell you. Thug with engineers. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, we had a couple of here talk about it. Nigga, man. I bet. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean to say. <laughs> Bruh, man, thug a Jonah engineer out so bad, bro. <laughs> that shit, he'd be mad. He'd be like, hot dog back at nigga. <laughs> <laughs> he'd just say anything, bro. I'd be like, damn. <laughs> but, uh... Oh, um, they do engineering school. The final test, like, need to be a thug session, like thug or trail, trail. Back oh, trail then. too. He chill now. He chill. Now. Oh, damn. <laughs> but back then, just even both of them niggas, like, <laughs> trail get the screaming at nigga. What about that? Supposed to? He been had chilled out over the years, man. Like, but but like back then when we was young, like both of them niggas, bro. But um, studio fail. I'm trying to think. The laptop never crashed. You never forgot nothing. Oh. I was in the studio. Damn, this shit was like maybe a year ago type shit. We in the studio and um me and Gunner in the studio and fucking uh he had it cut and I had my laptop. It was my Windows one right here. And I had like this shirt jacket type thing on, but he had a cup by the laptop. And I got up to like turn around and do something and it knocked the whole cup over my whole keyboard, oh. computer, everything. It was crazy because it was him and Roddy was in the studio. And um, I pulled a beat up. He started coming up with this crazy ass hook. Everybody in the room excited. Like the vibe is like on 10. Cause niggas like, oh, we feel like a smash now. Like it was one of them, like you felt like. And then I did that. And all of a sudden you don't hear the beat on no more. And I turn around. And it's just drank all over the fucking keyboard, my whole computer. Damn. And this is why I'm working on Heroes, though. Why I'm working on it, a lot of shit is on there. So, like, where I felt like I was dying right then, I was like, it got to be over. Where I picked the computer up and, like, water or, like, the juice or whatever had, like, pulled. I got a video of it, too, because, like, I be re recording everything every day. I went like this, and this shit started spilling all out from inside the computer. I was like, oh, it's through, bro. And then I ain't had it backed up in a long time. Shout my engineer, Ethan. I'm glad I ain't just sit there depressed and not do nothing or just go home. I ain't know what to do. It's just God let me into the other room with him. And I just showed him what happened. And I got a picture of it, too. So he had it upside down. He put it in rice? Nah, he had, like, unscrewed the bottom of it. And, he, like, he took the hard drive out. No engineer, man. They be knowing that shit. They should be knowing for sure. <laughs> you know, I ain't know what the fuck. Shout I'm out to good engineers. Over. So, you know, he be knowing everything. He was like, man. So, like, he just had that sitting out. And he was like, took the drive out. We gonna see if we could. Woo, woo, woo. So, um, shout out Razor. They sent a new computer and the same one. And he took the drive out and one. put it in a new computer and it had worked exactly the same. That's hard as fuck. Ain't fun. lose nothing. And Damn. I was just like, I was praying on it, so it just came through. But he was telling me, he was like, if we waited any longer, like, that shit would have been fried out. Nah, or like, if it's a MacBook, because, you know, the motherboard, the motherboard she is She get fucked the, up so quick. Yeah, so, like, if that was a MacBook, it would have been through. Because, like, the motherboard, like, all this shit's right there. But on a PC, they got, like, the hard drive, like, in a certain spot. So, you know, PC is customizable, so you just put that out, put it in another one. But... Yeah, that, that that fucked the whole vibe up. That, that that just that fucked everything up. Thank God it wasn't a Mac. That's my third one. Nah, nah thank God it wasn't a Mac. <laughs> so now anytime in the studio and niggas had cup drink anywhere, from my computer, my laptop like you this. got over there, I'd be like, nah, I baby, you gotta move that. You gotta, <laughs> you gotta move that shit. Like we ain't, you know what I'm saying? This shit too big. Like you gotta move that shit. But um, but yeah, I done had times in the studio with niggas and. Like you said, I'm thinking like, okay, I got these beats ready. Like, I know nigga gonna fuck with these. Like, you know how sometimes, I don't know, everybody do this. Like, the one that you think is the one for show for show, ain't the one. It be like that, but it's like, I won't even play that one first. Cause it's like, you know, sometimes people just wanna hear a few things. So I like, try to wait until what, what happened? Why niggas do that, bro? Like, Charles wait, remember that. where we did beat critiques? Remember where we did beat critiques the other day, and these niggas will play a fur beat, it will be like, they play the second beat. We be like, damn, nigga, why you ain't play that the first time? You finna get kicked out the live. Like, why you ain't play that the first time? No, it was so bad. We was finna end well, Something it, like, like that. You trying to get in. You you got to play your yeah. other shit first. <laughs> like, I just got to the point in my career. Now, I wasn't always doing that. Now, the way it's like, I kind of like, 
kind of like playing mind games with niggas type shit. But um, if you was a submission share back then, hell yeah, I'm trying to have the hardest shit first. But right, I had so many times where like, just like next, next, next. Man, shout out my boy. Man, I'd have been in the studio with Baby before, bro, and I didn't play. Maybe just one of the day I didn't play like. 40 beats, bro, type shit. I done did that before. It's just like playing on, playing on, playing on. You know, after a while, it just start to do something to you. You like, damn, like, nigga. You can't take it personal, though. Nah, I'm glad, yeah, I'm, I'm glad like, I'm hearing this from you, bro. Come but that's why I'm telling niggas, because it's like, <laughs> that's why I'm telling niggas, because, you know, niggas will think it's just like, oh, Metro is just like. I'm that, glad you said that, though. That's why I want to let niggas know, because it's like, bro, anybody, it's not just y'all, it's just like, I done been through it and then it got to the point where it's not like I'm thinking like oh you just supposed to like one of these I just really been thinking to myself like damn like, what the fuck like <laughs> you know what I'm saying like we done did that shit before like for sure for sure but um, everybody go through that man alright so you was talking about the engineer and we gonna get to Ethan but I feel like a big question and I ask we ask this a lot in the interviews is like oh what's your mixing process bro like you know Oh, right. I love the drums. Might put like a okay. clip of a limiter, you know, Maximus. I put some of my master. A lot of times we don't really think about what the engineer does when they're polishing all the songs of the album and stuff like that. And I know you was very hands on, like with the mixing process of your album. Always. So like kind of just talk about that, like that stage of the step, because we don't get a lot of information on this podcast about that, like the mixing process and polishing all those records. I love that question. I want to, can I use the bathroom? <laughs> yeah, nah, yeah, I wanna, yeah, yeah. I wanna like, yeah, yeah. It like I'm trying to get I'm getting these answers but then I'm thinking about that's what have my mind free I, I really want to talk about yeah, that yeah, yeah. No, I good. really want I really want to talk about interview one time he would talk he, the nigga said yo TV you alright I said I gotta go <laughs> nah, I just gotta go so bad I drink a lot of water <laughs> me too though and that's that why I was like man hold on hold on NPC, give me my motherfucking NPC nigga send me that shit I promise you NPC you give me an affiliate link I get you some sales bro just send me one I'll make a video you know what I'm saying? I just want to put that out there. Bro, every time I see a BBL, I just keep thinking about that fucking post. They say, a BBL must stand for butt and baby legs. <laughs> you a billionaire. You Do not you getting no BBL. That BBL <laughs> shit fucked yeah, everything. Yeah, that's what Yeah. That shit fucked the game. I ain't. And then that what I be saying, I'm like, bro, wait till we get like 40, 50. Like, bro, they over me looking crazy, bro. Crazy as hell. They look crazy now. They shit gonna be so, oh my, I don't even want, mm-mm. Shout out my natural queens, man. How do I get man. that for? But some of them look good. Look how you look. <laughs> some of them be looking, yeah, some of them be looking straight. Like, yeah. some, sometimes they get a little skinny BBL, a little slight look. But nah, some of them do be looking straight, though. But not not enough of them yeah. for the majority of them. A lot of them be boxed. A lot of them. For like, why you looking like? I, I, say, it. I say about out of 100%, about 30, 35% of them be like, that's not high enough, bro, for that's how many not, it is. That's Let not it. even high. That's, that's not even high. high. Damn. Everybody like what they like, bro. I know niggas go crazy. I know some niggas go crazy about this shit, but. Yeah, funny as hell, bro. <laughs> Since we on the topic, you had said going to the strip clubs to break records right. are the thing. Yeah. Is it still a thing now? Nah, like, the strip clubs really hold weight as far as seeing if your record is going to be, you know, fire or not? Nah. In Atlanta? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Hell Atlanta, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I feel like it's always yeah. going to be that because it's always going to be like a center of our culture here. You know what I'm saying? Like, even like some of the first songs that Lil Baby was putting out on Perfect Time and like, first time I heard them was like in Kamal's. And I'd be like, damn, who is this? I'm like, this shit hard. Like, that's just, that's how it is and that's how it go. Like, you know, the strip clubs like here, like that shit ain't like, other cities like that shit really like down there like our regular club you know what I'm saying so like really the songs that be hot in there or spinning in there be like the songs that be hot in the city and then you get the city and then you expand like I done seen it with Pluto I done seen it with Slime I done seen it with just so many just just baby everybody you know what I'm saying like it started here and then just they get the town and then like niggas just take off. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Like, um, but yeah, it's still a thing. Like, superhero 
it's a song, superhero on this other song that I didn't put on my album with me and Future. Uh, man, they done had that song in Magic, both of them songs for over a year, probably a year and a half. And uh-huh. they still never came out. But um, yeah, like I remember going to DJ, uh, shout my boy Boo, and I had just, and I had gave him the, uh, I had airdropped him. Cause like, I'm really knowing him, so I know he ain't just finna leak him or nothing. Cause back then we used to like me and Thug, like we'll burn him on a CD and then take the CD, cause then you know you can't just have it. But um, and yeah, he done played him. And then like girls and folks would call me different times when I wasn't there and be like, yo, they playing this song Magic in. I was like, oh. But um, it's just a good way to like gauge and just see how people just vibe and you know, I feel like it's always gonna be a good like. I won't say test, but like. The playing around with the record scene. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Just yeah. saying. Like, we Not do the, the same ground, thing man. in the studio. Like, got a bunch of folks in the studio, girls, whatever. It's just like, okay, let me play this and just see what everybody do. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. <laughs> I've been saying some other shit, but I ain't trying to tell them myself. So, but, since you're stopping right there, let me just ask you what's your uh, top five studio centuries? Studio what? Essentials. Essentials? I see his girls. What's in the name? I ain't say that. Nope. I ain't say that. <laughs> Not to get you in trouble, but, but I right, mean, next? Essentials. Besides, like, all the work shit, besides, like, computers and keyboards and drum machines. Yeah, of or, course you need that. So, like, okay, whatever. so you mean, like, shit to go with that? Yeah. Water, a lot of water. I be in the studio a long time, so, like, I be drinking hella water and hey, all day. This shit ass, bro. Like, I saw y'all need to be having it. What that shit? All day. What's that at Kroger? <laughs> <laughs> Kroger it water. Really that Kroger hey, water. Nah, the studio, they got Deer Park water, but Yeah. And you ain't got no cookies. Oh, yeah. You need the cookies. Know, bye. Yeah, bro. Like, but like on my studio rider, the stuff they'll have there every day, they'll have the one liter, a whole bunch of the one liter essentials. If I'm in the studio all day, I drink probably like three of them that day. Mm. The um has some has some fruit. Uh, I'm trying to think, essential. Ethan. Is that water? Nah, I'm an engineer. <laughs> engineer. Oh, I, oh, I was macabre. Like, I feel what dumb the fuck. Is Ethan? Like, yeah. <laughs> Ethan, man, that's, that's my like. Uh, half of my brain. Um, <laughs> the five PS Five. We've been there a long time, so niggas come in and out. We always playing two K and shit. Mm, that's it for real, bro. Like I know a lot of niggas be in the studio playing, but I just be in there working, just mm-hmm. making beats, working on songs, editing songs, like just. Making shit. So let's get into this. The process. Yeah. Polishing the songs right here. I'm oh, sorry. I know. I know. This, I know. It's no nigga. It's no coffee in a row. <laughs> a producer. You know, saying Australia. Like, bro, why the fuck they talk about? Get to the fucking shit. <laughs> get back to the shit. I don't want to hear about no more BBLs. <laughs> BBLs <laughs> and Kroger water. <laughs> but now, for real though, let's get to the process though. Beat wise, I don't. Like, I never, I don't think I ever made a beat where I had like a, I used like a compressor or limiter for anything. Mm. So, I don't be doing all that shit, bro. Really, all I do is level everything out. I make the whole beat, then I level out every single like sound and drum sound and everything just one by one. Like from muted from the first thing, then the next thing, level the next thing, the last thing, and just had everything that's on, like pan a little bit, everything that's on place and pocket to like where it's space. It's all about space. More than anything, like, yeah, some effects and reverb and shit, but like a lot of the extra shit they be trying to make you think like you need, you really don't for real. Um, as as far as the beat, just making the beat first. But then when we get to the song and like the albums, um, we just be trying shit like uh, 
I'm a geek. My engineer Ethan, he a real geek too. Like, he be putting me on to like a lot of like hardware, like reverbs and distortions and EQs. Like, we be using all that shit. And uh, for every album we do, we uh, we'll have all the track outs to like the whole beat and uh, like all the splits for the vocals, and we actually be mixing everything through through the board. Like, so a SSL or a knee on um, Savage Mode 2, we had used the knee. Like, a knee board, a knee board is more like a, that and the SSL, they got different sounds. Like a greasy, like, it's like a different type of sound. And the SSL is more like, got more like snap and like more, uh, how does it, describe it but they got different sounds but um like a lot of boards and stuff like really in Atlanta a lot of them don't work you know that's why every time I mix an album I be having to go to Cali and be in Cali for a minute because you know they got like pop stars and singers and different people who, like they still use all that shit you know what I'm saying so like cause you gotta do maintenance on them for them to use but and that maintenance cost so I'm not really blaming the studios out here it's like if niggas ain't using it if niggas just using this to turn the volume up like they don't be having maintenance on none of them shits for real. So, um, but we actually be using them and we'll just have every track on a different track on the board and just level it, EQ it a little bit, and that's it. Really running it through there alone already, like, it's a night and day difference, like, on the sound. So, that's really all we do for real. Like, me and Ethan do everything together. Um, I'll go in, like, edit everything, like, how I want to, level some shit, and he'll just make sure everything's straight, and, you know, we just tag team that shit every time. Nah, I feel with it, because a lot of producers, like, they'll be like, oh, you know, leveling the beat, but the engineer, they do more to it, and I just want to know, like, the pr different perspectives See, overall. It depends, like, maybe an engineer, because I done seen this too, maybe if you're a producer at home and you submit the beat, because this used to happen to me too. Not even submit the beat, but, like, not as in on that process and an engineer somewhere else is mixing it. A lot of times them niggas will be, especially I don't know you or whatever, they trying to, they want to put their own touch or like thumbprint on it or make it sound how they see fit type thing. You know what I'm saying? But Ethan know what I like. He know like, he really like, It's like he he know how I want shit and he'll really just like leave it however I have it or put it. But just like how I put it. He'll just make it like the best version of what I'm trying to do. Yeah, yeah. Like it's like your barber, like after a while. Anything I tell your barber, like you just We don't even be having to tell each other, bro. Like yeah. we we always listen to songs and review them and see what we gonna change. Like every song, we always mix songs like but so many times it'll be like version 15 like you know what I'm saying and um it's just by now working so many years with them it's like we don't even have to talk about it we'll be listening to a song reviewing it and the song will be over and then he'll just say something like man you feel like uh them ad libs too loud or, or that kick me come down a little bit and every single time I promise you'll be like bro I was just thinking the same thing at the same time I was about to say that or vice versa. I'll say something. They'll cut me off like, hey, bro, I was thinking the same thing right now. So it's like, that's why I said the other half of my brain because it's like we to the point to where like we just completely in sync. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's why on the back of this album, it's a executive produced by me and him because like, it's like we, it's just like we just locked in like that and um, he it's like he he helps me like execute my vision. Like he knows what I'm trying to do or where I'm trying to go, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, so for like a producer that just struggle overall with just their mix and leveling of the beats, like what are what are like what are some tips you would say to go back and do to fix it? I say don't overthink it. Just mm -hmm. like don't overthink it, bro. Just just level. 
just level everything out, basically. That's what I'd be doing. That's what I always did from when I was 13 and now. Like, I do the same shit. I just level it out how I hear my ear, like, to hear it, you know? Um, you always pretty much want your, well, everybody different, but me, I want my kick and my snare, like, more on top of the mix. Mm. Like, just driving everything. And just try to kind of fit everything in between. Level wise, you know. Man, I mean, so many bro, it mixes shit. You can really go yeah. like so many ways. With yeah, you, you go know so many. You know, it's different vibes for different songs. It's mm-hmm. like for different weather. Like you're not gonna dress up the same for it. Like when it's sunny, it was ninety degrees, or when it's twenty degrees. Right. It's just different. Like you know, like maybe I'm doing an R and B song with somebody, or maybe like the kick or snare don't have to be as blaring or as how just like smacking or like you know it's just different every time it just depends on what you're trying to do but I would tell producers just don't overthink it just level it out like as you hear it like however you hear it I feel like I feel like people probably just try to like overcomplicate it and that that's what be happening yeah I remember like the first two years before you used to got there rock the shit all the FL on the mixer color Coordinate the shit, level it, do the little I used stereo, to color coordinate my shit too. Stereo <laughs> shit, like the bushes, and this is like, uh. But it's just time. I mean, I feel like it's trial and error. It's just time. That's why producers always ask me advice, and I always tell them two things. I always tell them, whatever you're doing, make beats work at your crowd every single day, bro. Because how I even to develop the ear just to know exactly how I want and like shit that only come from time of doing that and doing it again and again and again every beat ain't to get placed uh, every beat I'm not just trying to make a hit it's just like shooting free throws like you just getting better so it's like just doing it and in the process of songs and shit pop off from it but it's like you just gotta keep doing it and you just gonna naturally get better every time more than the last time and the other thing I be telling niggas is Lock in with an upcoming artist. Like, how you upcoming? Just lock in with an upcoming artist. If you really want to just, like... I'll say that's more like... That's like the cheat code to me. You know what I'm saying? Because you could send a beat to Future or Travis or Drake or something like that, and they could use it. They could do a song off of it. You get some recognition and turn up off of it, but... The chances of that already is already even smaller. Then even if it do happen, like, that's cool. Um, Pluto gonna be Pluto regardless of Drake or whoever, so that's not really, like... <laughs> I'm not gonna say it don't matter, but it's like, they gonna be them regardless of whoever beat they use or whatever. Don't mean the song gonna be the same, but, but I feel like as a producer, like, you break an artist it's just so much more that come with that and so much more like opportunity and, and respect and things you could do. You lock in with an upcoming artist, like how you upcoming and say y'all get some shit going and it pop off. Now, um, y'all more in like a, a favorable position or like, just like how I put this. Like, mo, kind of, like, in control of y'all own shit type of shit. You know what I'm saying? So I always suggest the niggas. I look at that as more like taking, like, the back, though. Just locking in with somebody upcoming and y'all just build what y'all got going on. And, and you know, that shit jump off. That shit jump off. I feel like, that's, I feel like the internet, because now we're, like, especially in the producer community, it's more like, okay, placements... I feel like the number one way to get a placement now that producers think is the sample maker route. But really, it's like, I feel like we kind of pulled back as a community overall just from like actually like working with an upcoming artist and getting in the studio with an artist. Like it's, and there's not, nothing wrong with it, but I'm just saying, right. like, you know, originally it was actually us like growing with an artist, you know what I'm saying? Growing with an artist, that's different. You know what I'm saying? Now, like, they calling both of y'all. You know, they ain't just calling him. They calling you, too. Mm-hmm. It's like, man, where the sound coming from with this shit? So I'll say locking in with an artist, just building that that uh, that identity 
that sonic identity and just that legacy, I feel like that shit holds so much more weight. So I just want to go back a little bit. Um, when you were talking about Ethan, a lot of people don't, you know, give engineers their credit. Don't mind my voice, y'all. I'm getting over a flu. Um, a lot of people don't credit their engineer. So how did like how did you and Ethan even lock in? That's a good one. Um, this might have been what year was this? Might have been like 2016, maybe 15, 16, I think, and uh. Encore Studio in L.A. He had worked for, he was the engineer for, like, all the Paramount Studios in L.A. So, mm -hmm. you know, they own Encore, Paramount, um, American, a bunch of them. So, he was the engineer for that. So, I remember it was a time, a point I was locking in at Encore, and I was just book studio time, going there and make beats and shit. And he was the engineer that, like, will come with the session. So that's really just how I met him and how we, so I've been me booking that so many times and so we just started a vibe and I just play him shit I was working on and I remember we was doing, I had started, uh, I was doing Savage Mode and even though Alex had mixed it, that's like, uh, I was working on a lot of them songs with, like, in the studio with Ethan, like, that's how, uh, that's really how our relationship, like, really had started, mm. you know? And from there, it was just like, we just locked all the way in, man, Boominati. Oh, that. Go ahead and run through, like, the Boominati roster, you know what I'm saying? Like, for example, we got David and Eli. Yeah, shout out to David and Eli. Show so, love. Shout out David Eli, man, my brothers. I was talking to them earlier today. They on vacation right now. God bless them. My boy Doughboy. You know, Doughboy Beats. Nah, he said no. <laughs> I was thinking about the artist, nigga. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, you talking about D-O-E. No, nah, it's D-O-U-G-H. Okay. Doughboy. Uh, I know Doughboy from high school back in the day, too. Um, Doughboy, David and Eli. My boy Chris, XZ. He hard. He play guitar. He play keys, too, but, like, crazy on the guitar. He really crazy with everything. Um... What song on the album I did with him? Uh, Lock On Me. And it was some more shit that didn't go on the album that me and him did that was crazy. But I'm using it for something else. Uh, my homeboy Top. Shout out Top. Uh, yeah. What'd you say? My little brother, he ain't signed to me because that's my little brother. But he done started making beats. Uh, he had did part of Raindrops with me. And, uh, you know, that's my real brother. Like, yeah. same parents and shit. So, like, you know, he ain't signing him or nothing. But um, he with me. You feel me? Uh, yeah, that's it pretty much. So, like, would you say, like, David Eli, like, your go-to sample makers right now? Like, for melodies? Um... I be liking to mix it up. So, like, I'll fuck with them or Chris or, uh -huh. you know, I'll do a lot of shit on my own. Like, you know, I feel like me and Southside and, like, Spins and, like, Sonny, I feel like our, our era generation is some of the last ones that, I'm just now realizing this, that, like, we just make whole beats from scratch. Like, that's all we really ever knew. Like, it wasn't, the loop shit, like, that's, like, some new shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, ain't nothing wrong with it. But I'm saying, like, back in the day when we was coming up making beats, or, like, if a nigga, if we seen a nigga doing that, or if we ever was in the studio and somebody was just doing that, we'd be like, man, what the fuck? Hey, man, that nigga cheating, y'all. Like, what the hell is this nigga doing? You know what I'm saying? But, um, so, like, but it's just the game evolved. Like, just how people sample shit. Like, I look at it like, it's the same thing. Like, it's dope. Like, it's cool. Like, but, um, people always ask me to, Asked to send me loops and all this. Like, I don't do that. I don't fuck with that. I was, that's what I was leading to, Kyle. Like, bro. Don't even start that discussion. You seem like you're pretty like, exclusive. Like, don't even start don't, that don't discussion. Don't get me wrong. We'll do some FBI shit to get Weezy email now. But we can't get your email. Like, you know what I'm saying? Nah, like, niggas done got it. That's why I had to make a new But niggas, <laughs> I promise to God, if I, I don't want to put nothing on God, but like, I'm about certain if I go look right now on this email that had been my main email. Oh no, 856. Too hard, Luke. I don't even know how these niggas done got 
My they email. Be hacking shit. But like niggas done told me before, like, yeah, you know your your emails on Reddit. Like niggas be paying for the emails and buying it. Yeah, you can Bruh, buy it on Google. It's another nigga right over at 828, 856. This ain't no lie. These two different niggas sending loops. They be doing that all day, bro. You got to put your email <laughs> in a different name. Nah, but I, I made a whole nother one, but I still got that one. Just I be signing up for certain so shit. Like, I right, boom. Like how? Okay. An artist, a producer that really wants to work with you, right? They hard too. They hard as fuck. Like how would they approach it? I think that's a, a roadblock for a lot of producers. They don't know how to per, like approach a producer. I be in the studio cooking, bro. Like, I'm... I, feel, I be feeling like I'm from the old school, bro. So it'd be like... Don't send me nothing. Come yeah, in here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, all this, like, that's all we knew. Like, me, Sonny, Sizzle, everybody, C Note, we in the room cooking. All right. So, like, a lot of this new age, it ain't nothing wrong with it because it's hard. Like, David and Eli in a whole nother country, like, they in Germany. Uh, So it's like, um, the technology is fire that you can send stuff, but like, I like to be same thing with the artists, the artists and producers. I like to get in there and like really put our brains together and like let's cook, like let's put it together. You know what I'm saying? So, as far as sending loops, like I never be into that or be oh my Instagram DM all that everything all day is niggas trying to send loops or niggas doing this or niggas run up on me with flash drives or like <laughs> is is it like something wrong with that like? I ain't nothing wrong with that because okay. you got to hustle. Yeah, you got to You know what I'm too. saying? You yeah. got to hustle. So, like, if I was that age or from, like, this era of time, like, I might probably, I'd probably be on the same shit. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But, um... Mm, I forgot. You was on the Twitter back then. You know come saying? on, bro. You was going crazy in the Twitter then. I don't nah, remember the video. I was going crazy. I was going crazy on Twitter. Like, let me send some beats. But, like... I don't know. I feel like the I put this. Then I be seeing like what be going on with a lot of that shit too sometimes. Like I'm really in the studio making songs every day, bro. I'm making songs. Like niggas recording shit. I'm making songs. I'm making projects every day. So like I don't need no nigga sending me no shit that he done sent three hundred niggas already. Like Thanks. Yeah, especially when you we already made it clear you're very exclusive. You know what I'm saying? Very, bro. Yeah. Like, my music is like my, like, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, I hold that very close to me. So it's like, I don't even play with that. That's why, like, I fuck with David and Eli. Like, anything they send me, I'm the only one that done heard it. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like that's how the same thing with Chris. Like, I feel like that's how it's supposed to be. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, I be encouraging them to, uh, with other niggas and shit and telling them woo woo but they'll make some shit just for them you feel me so it's like um, I ain't got no time to do nothing and then we got this song and then pop up and just hear part of something somewhere else and then now it's like you know what I'm saying uh, but yeah I feel like today we got a lot of like do y'all ever feel like Sometimes we got, and this is another thing, go back to what I was talking about earlier, talking about like, it's like why a lot of beats don't be that hard or crazy. I feel like we got too much shit. You ever feel like that? I ain't gonna say that. I, I, I did feel like that, but then I was like, someone was telling me, they was like, bro, you got a lot of basketball players that don't stop motherfuckers going to the NBA. You got a lot of niggas that got them try out for some or a lot of niggas in the school for doctors and shit. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, saturation shouldn't be like the excuse type shit. It shouldn't be the excuse. But I feel like, I feel like we got so much access to so much advanced technology now that it make niggas lazy. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Because it's all that, like, the texture of your fingers. So it make like, niggas lazy, bro. Yeah. All right, man. Let's, let's get into this right here. So, we got this segment called Overrated, Underrated. You we, give you, we give you a topic. Huh? You skip. Yeah, I, I, I big skip. Oh, Only okay. cause we we already on the subject, so we, okay. we give you oh, subject. So you wanted to get into that. Yeah, we give you a subject. You say it's overrated, underrated. So we're talking about loops. Right? I'm not here to shit on nothing. Nobody do. I'm just saying, just me, bro. Yeah, it's, 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 yeah. it's a producer. talk. You know what I'm saying? Don't start no talk. hate train in What's the up? comments. This is just a opinion. They start whatever in the comment. I know they're <laughs> in a real place. I don't care about that. But I'm not trying to like discourage nobody. Oh no! Nah, I, nah, nah, sure, I yeah. live to inspire. So like, right. I want niggas to really take what I'm saying and get inspiration from it, not be Throw discouraged away, yeah. or like I'm trying to shit on what you're doing or like you're doing everything wrong. I'm not nah, saying bro. that. This, this ain't, bro. 
This ain't no podcast, nigga. It's, it's master class. You know what I'm saying? So we listening. <laughs> we master taking class. notes. You know what I'm saying? With the central water. So you know he coming with gems. Because he got the goddamn <laughs> electrolytes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so overrated, underrated AIs. And the reason why I say AIs, you be seeing like the little memes and the videos and shit with the AI and the music production and shit like that. What they be having? They having like this little software that be making, uh, helping make the beats. You know what's crazy? Check this out. I swear to God, I ain't, I ain't tell you about this shit either because I, I want to see your face when I say it here. What? Most of these questions came from an AI. You lying. I swear to God. I asked. You know, I oh my saying, God, they trying to take our job. <laughs> <laughs> I be saying, I, I, be saying I don't really be seeing the AI beat shit. I be seeing people talk about it, but like, I be seeing more so like, I ain't never really tried to like tap into like how, like how you said they can make questions or they could, I be seeing like the AI pictures, like the AI art. I be seeing that shit. Damn, this shit pretty advanced. It's How like, they do this? That's what I'm saying. I don't know whether to hate technology bro, or like it. Like, that shit's crazy, man. That shit's so crazy. That's too... It's too much, bro. Yeah. It's too much. It's that's getting creepy. very invasive. Like, what the yeah, fuck? Yeah, it feels like... <laughs> like... AI. Gone too far. But really, as far as... AI, as far as, like, production and beat, man, it don't... That's definitely cheating. I'm, yeah, it is. But I'm spiritual, so I, I know, like... I put my soul in my music. Mm. And that's something AI don't got. Like they could sure. calculate or what they think, like <coughs> by algorithm or whatever the fuck they be doing. You know what I'm saying? But like, like we were saying with the BBLs, it's never going to equate to the, the God given. Like yeah. it's yeah, never yeah. going. You know what I'm saying? It could might could get you by with some shit, but it's not going to never be like on that level. It might make some shit that's hard, but it's never going to be like can't be the same. For sure. Nah, the AI shit really a mean shit. I just wanted to see y'all, especially with the interview questions. Like, that was crazy. Off. Yeah, that's yeah, crazy. Yeah, like, it made it work easy. I ain't gonna count no hills. Damn, no bro. Up. You ain't think of my questions? You used the AI thing? Nah, I mean, you seen the questions I asked. I'm basically getting questions, you know what I'm saying? All right, so overrated, underrated. Nexus in 2023. Now, the reason I bring this up is because, man, you know how Nexus 2015, 2016, you know what I'm saying? Classic. That, like, that lead you was asking me about earlier. Bro, like, it's this one <laughs> beat. It's in the cook up. Buying you one. I don't know what beat it is. I got the timestamp though. Five eleven. Hold on. Nah, fuck that. Damn. Hold on. And play this shit. Pull it up. Oh my god! Not you and found this over here. <laughs> and there ain't too many of this nigga. <laughs> <laughs> don't count. This one. Man, Scooter. What song? What me? What sound? I'm talking about the beat overall. The melody. Nigga, when we going crazy in high school, goddamn, bro. <laughs> Temper tantrums, like where the fuck is that? I'm going through every expansion on Nexus. Where the oh, fuck no. is that? <laughs> <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Is Nexus still going in 2023? Like, I ain't gonna lie, I don't. I ain't used Nexus in a long time, and yeah. this, this, this not even the shit on Nexus. Let me, let me. I hadn't used Nexus for a long time. Now I didn't have it on none of my new computers. So it's probably like two years ago, maybe three. I had got Nexus 3 for the first time. I was way late to the Nexus 3 party. And I paid for it and everything. And for some reason, like, I don't know why I installed it or like all the sounds. Or something. It just went right. So I was like, all right, man, just fuck it. But, um, like I said, like how niggas was talking about the flex shit. It's just, it's really how you use it, how you dress it up. So, oh, I ain't gonna call it overrated, but like I don't be using it. Okay, no they, more. they got Nexus four out now. I gotta check that. You joint. lying? Yeah, For I just real? found out about this shit on Discord. Well, I think I told three hundred or something. See, I'll go get that. Yeah, that shit five. You know how like niggas, you remember back in Nexus two. You had the skins and shit. Yeah, hey, I used shit. to have a white skin. I used to chain my skin up. Yeah, yeah. Y'all ain't uh. I don't know, y'all might be too young. Did you used to use hypersonic? Hypersonic too. Nah. nah. See, we was using hypersonic like when I was in high school. Uh. But they had like a lot of crazy quality sounds. That was like the Omnisphere level plug in before Omnisphere. It was hypersonic too. Uh. I wonder what they doing. They still making shit, but let me show you what this shit used to look like, bro. Hypersonic was the one back in the day. I came in when niggas was doing the Nexus, Gladiator, Electric X. Okay, so Purity. Okay, that's when we was young. Oh, yeah, Purity and Hypersonic, we was using that around the same time, but uh, that's what make it Steinberg. 
But uh, um, what was that? Yeah, Electro X and all that. I remember that. That's like I used to stay with Sonny. That's when we started using that, like 2012, 13. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's that's when niggas really started fucking with Electro X, Gladiator, like all that type yeah, shit. Yeah, I remember those days. Like, yeah, music. good days. Hey. Niggas was making crazy beats. Now bro. we got fucking arcade and got the. Bro, you know, I, I don't even understand that. That shit usable. Huh? I done heard it's hard. Niggas done told me about it, but like, I ain't got it. Like, I ain't never like. I fuck with arcade. That shit hard, though. I can't lie. So, like, arcade. how it work? The vocals? It's like, it's that like. Come from there? I think of it like Fruity Slicer. You put a sample in Fruity Slicer and you hit the C or D and it plays like a part of that sample. It's like that, except way more advanced. Like, you got. Uh, the black keys of the effect, so you can hit C and it plays a part of the sample. You can hit the black key at the same time and you reverse it. Oh the damn! What the fuck? That shit hard though. I ain't gonna lie. Like it's all in tempo. You can change the key of it real fast. So like you making a, a piano melody, you need some vocal chops. You go in there, go to a vocal chop or a bank, change the key real quick. The tempo will already be in there. Yeah, boy. That shit, that shit like, crazy. That's why I love harps, leads, pianos. It's like it's like basically finding like chops like. Little phrases and shit to put in your beats, but it's just a little bit easier because the tempo already there. You can just change the key, and you can do more shit. Like it's not you're not boxing. You can actually put your own samples in there. That's what I was wondering. Yeah, you could take a whole eight bar loop, put it in there, and chop it in there. Niggas don't know that, but it's a whole section of arcade where you can put your own shit in there, chop, and have the effects, reverb. It got everything. Like, this shit fine. Damn. You sleep on. Okay. I'm sleep. Yeah, you sleep on arcade. I don't sleep. Man, I'll sleep on a lot of yeah. shit you told me about, but like. That way, that's why I love this shit, bro, and it's beautiful because it's like, it's like, how they say, like, it's a hundred ways to skin a cat. Like, it's just so many different ways to, like, do the same type shit. You know what I'm saying? So they really make the possibilities of music, which is already limitless, like, even more limitless. You know what I'm saying? That's why I be feeling, like, going back to my point of, do we have so much shit now that, like, people just get lazy? No, I think it is, bro. I said this shit. It is weird coming from me because I'm the nigga that make the tutorials. I feel like the tutorials is what put everybody in a box. Not everybody, but put... Probably some, doing the same shit. The same shit. Because everybody want to jump on the trend. Yeah, it's not a... You didn't have, like, a Timbaland tutorial when you was trying to learn the shit. But you could go... I could go... Let's say I just started today. I could find a billion Metro tutorials. And now I'm sitting here trying to figure out how to sound like you so bad. I ain't even think about trying to sound like myself. You know That's an even better point. And you know what's so crazy? That's really genius. I never thought about that because like coming into the shit, we didn't really have tutorial like producing like when we was coming up, like making beat, it wasn't even no popular thing. So yeah, we're to like, figure it out. It's so huge now that like it's all kind of tutorials. So niggas like, I wanna figure this shit out now. How can I get on YouTube? And, but we just had to like bump our heads a thousand times and just like Figure shit out and grow. I never thought about that, bro. That's yeah, crazy. Cause I, I like I stopped making tutorials like couple, I haven't made tutorials in a couple months. Only because like my process of making a tutorial, I say I'm about to make a Southside type beat. I literally gotta sit here and put myself in a box to make Southside or what I think is a Southside beat. Yeah. And then now I'm just like, damn, I done got 10 beats that sound like these niggas, but what the TV sound like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I had to like step away I from it. I guess it's di it's different type of tutorials. That's why you asked me earlier, do I watch tutorials? The kind of tutorials I watch, like if I watch any now, it'll be like technical stuff. It ain't yeah. gonna be like no nigga sound or like no yeah. how to. Yeah, it's these tutorials always like, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Shit like that or um, how to get the most out of it. Like everything this plugin could do or like, or this piece of hardware or like, um, even the NPCX, I don't watch because so many different things and functions in there, like shit like that. That's like reading the manual. Like I done, I done watch so many different tutorials on like just different ways people just do things and chop samples and like ways to do things. But I don't like to get too deep off in it because a lot of that shit and a lot of magic come from you just learning and exploring and just like, like I said, just going through the trial and error of. Or you might just find a way to do the same thing that like niggas ain't really doing for real, but you you wouldn't have found that way um if you was watching the tutorial and you just went with this. Uh -huh. I'd be feeling like it's good to get the knowledge, but um but like the tight beat like tutorial thing, I never thought about that. Like you're right. 
that might be as much or even more than like what be wrong with shit than niggas having access to too much shit. I don't even want to say too much shit, but just too much like. It's like, bro, I wasn't even hip. Niggas had to let me know. I didn't even know till last year, 2020. What was last year? 2022. That niggas had uh, like packs of MIDI, bro. Hell, that shit. I did not know that was a thing till like, I be on Instagram and like, you know how they have ads and shit? It'll keep popping up. I'm like, what they mean, MIDI pack? Like, what they mean? And yeah, then that shell show a nigga on YouTube yeah. and he'll drag the shit just on the shit and he'll just be there. I'm like, why y'all niggas even doing this shit? Like, I'm not saying that, like, you can do what you want to do, but for me, the fun is in, like, the, just the creating, bro. Like, it's like you just trying to, like, finesse and, like, print some money or some shit. Like, it's like, I don't know, bro. I, I don't know. It's like, maybe somebody who's, like, a pure artist who draw or paint or whatever, and and uh, somebody else doing some shit, but like they just tracing. They not gonna respect it the same, cause it's like it's cool that you trace. There ain't nothing wrong with tracing it, but like, what part of this is really your identity or your DNA or like your what makes music special? I just feel like the technology we just getting more and more to like this shit for me like I robot. And it's just like take the soul from everything type shit. I feel like what you're saying, bro. Like, I feel like a lot of producers feel like that. But at the same time, we in this little mindset now where producers really care more about the bread and just having that placement and the actual sound and shit, too. But that go back to what I was saying earlier, what you was talking about, like, with a lot of shit sounding the same or not that inspired, that's what all that come from. Yeah. That's what all that come from, like, if you really, I ain't gonna say for everybody, bro, cause like I said, I'm not trying to shit on nobody, but like, if you really, your intentions just gotta be in the right place. I say that. Yeah, yeah. Like, I feel like the blessings and everything like that I ain't got in my life and, and just even where I'm at and where I'm going, it didn't came from my intentions always being pure. They done always been pure, bro. Like, nobody could fuck with me tomorrow. I'll still do this for free. Forever, nigga. Like, I done did it for free. Forever. Like, I wasn't never trying to do it like, I want to get some money for some jewelry and some cars and, like, bitches and all this. Like, it's just like, I love music, purely. Like, with no other motive in in mind. So it's like, when your heart really in it, like, really, really in it, all them other things will just follow. But you trying to just chase and focus on them things, yeah, I can hear it in niggas' music. I ain't even just talking about producers, like artists. Like I can hear it in niggas' music, like, like your intentions, like, in another place. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's why you getting other results. That's why this shit sounded another way because like your soul not in it. Like music come from like soul. Like before we had a computer, or anything, before we had electricity, and somebody was sitting on a rock with a guitar or something, like they feelings was in that shit like how they felt, like their identity. So it's like, I don't know, just today, but you're right. I be seeing that, like, a lot of people look at producing. Like, I know a lot of niggas, like, I done showed some niggas some shit. Like, I got homeboys, I got a lot of folks, like, they'll just look at it and be like, a nigga will be in the studio with you a whole year and just be like, damn, so that nigga sitting on that computer, he making all that money. Shit, let me do this shit too. Which ain't nothing wrong with that. You could get inspired and really love the music, but... I be seeing and knowing when niggas be like, niggas just want to like, it's like a jug type shit. Like, boy, I can sit in the house and do what and make what? I make some M's like, you know what I'm saying? But I feel like that's why we got we got a lot of that going on. So like, that really would it be for real. But yeah, <laughs> for real, bro. But if your heart really in it, like, it's a difference. I was laughing because like, <laughs> I ain't gonna count, nigga. I go on for hours talking about this shit, like just producing shit. And we trying to figure out what questions to cut because we've been no, talking so goddamn long. We looking at the time like, oh shit. <laughs> How long it been? Yo, shit, oh, yeah. We about to go into like three hours and a few minutes. Oh, like, damn. Like, it's like it's two, two hours, 16, oh. but we okay, started yeah. like nine, so we like two hours. I mean, you could probably trim some of it down when I'd just be like, thank you for two Trim minutes, it. Like, uh... It's too many gems. <laughs> 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 no, nah, I was just saying though, like, 
It, this ain't an area like I'll just sit here learning type shit. You feel yeah. me? So yeah, but th- that's why I wanted this to be. That's why I've been so excited to do this because it'd be yeah, like, yeah. yeah, I don't want niggas to take none of this the wrong way. I want niggas to take this and learn and take off with it. Like listen to what I'm saying. Like this is all the shit that I was wishing when I was coming up. Like all the producers and everybody I looked up to did. Like the shit I was praying, like just needed. Like you know what I'm saying? For sure. Like just take that inspiration, take this whole shit, and really run with it. Like. We gonna break this into two parts for so, sure. <laughs> that's <laughs> hard. Two parts <laughs> for the viewers. I do want to get into like the artist type side and just the history yeah. of Metro Boomy because we don't really know like the full story. You haven't. You just started doing interviews, so we don't really right. know like the full story behind Metro Boomy. And what I really want to know is like the switch of the sound. All right, so I just played the the Cook Up Volume One. <laughs> we had that Metro, and then I say Savage Mode. You get you 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 can hear it in Big Sean album. The switch of the sound, but I say it was savage yeah. mode too. And it was like, oh shit, like more polished. Yeah, and it was it was the whole everything was different. It was the samples came in, and then the drums changed, and it was like, oh shit. Yeah, you know what I'm saying now you said early in the interview, you was like you want NPC, so that makes totally sense. But kind of talk about like that transition. It's just I didn't learn because you got to think all the producers ever that really like fizzled out. Stay, I don't want to say stuck in their ways, but like, didn't want to grow and explore. Like, you got to have that, con- you got to have that hunger for, for growth. Mm-hmm. You got to have that hunger for, okay, what else can I learn? What else can I add to my repertoire? What else can I, um, you just got to, you got to want to grow, bro. That's why you got to look at everybody. All the producers that has been relevant for multiple generations, like even like Kanye or Pharrell or something, like they never like they never they they always like wanted to keep growing and had that hunger for okay what else or what's next or what can I you know what I'm saying like what we talk about Kanye West the same today if. He did chipmunk soul samples forever until now. If he never didn't stop doing it. That's facts. At a certain point, niggas have been like, all right, we on to something else. Music mm-hmm. changed. Everything changed every few years. So it's like, if he didn't, like, college dropout, it was like a lot of chipmunk soul and the samples and stuff. Um, Even late registration, it was samples, but it, like, it didn't feel the same. Then graduation, he just went all the way. Like, okay, we still sampling shit, but like in a different way. Um, got these big synths and shit on here. Um, to even like, you could tell a nigga that just really like, just got that want to just like keep exploring. But that's why I say music is endless. Like, so it's like it's so much you it's too much you could do to just be like alright I'm gonna just stick with this style and just do this just forever you know what I'm saying like even on Yeezus if a lot of niggas ain't like it it was still like bro it's just how I'm feeling right now mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying like this is how I'm feeling then Dark Fantasy where it's like <coughs> it's like all my shit ever but just on the highest form type shit all mashed together like you know but um Man, what was the original question? I be, I be goddamn. I was so into your inside. I forgot the reason. I was just switching, just switching your sound. From oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it just be that, bro. Like, I, I'm a student of the game for one, so just knowing like that's what it take. But just not even just the student part. It's just the the wanting to just like, you know. And I feel like that's how you stay inspired and stay fresh and stay like, because at a point, if you just doing the same exact thing and forever and just stuck in your ways like that shit could be uninspiring you know what I'm saying but if you try to start on some other shit or be like how can I learn this or let me try to start doing this type of shit it's like it reignite that excitement and that fire uh, like when I was a kid like learning how to do this shit and it's like it make it more fun again and it just make it like cause you just like it's like a journey it's like exploration and just like it's exciting you know so um yeah I feel like that it was definitely essential I listen to all types of music like 
I always have. So it's like just be having so many ideas, just want to do so many things. And another part of it, I feel like the internet and like, not even just the internet, but I'm saying people in the world, I feel like they was trying to box me in so much that it made me like push back harder type shit. You know what I'm saying? Because they always going to try to box you in. Even the album I just dropped, like they'll still try to box it again. You know what I'm saying? They'll be like, oh, this hard, or it's a hard ass trap album. It's like, First of all, I hate that word and term, like when it comes to music, like like beats. They quick to classify something as they trap. quick they but I, I look at that as the like as the um like they like they patch you in your head, like, okay, that's good, like you can have that, like or like a you know what I'm saying? I feel like they they be like playing niggas with that shit. Yeah, like some people don't really hear it, like they just say like, how, you know how your grandma or, you know what I'm saying, auntie? Yeah. Someone else in the church or something be like, what are y'all hearing those beats? It's just the hi-hats in the class. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah, saying? Like, yeah. they just don't hear it type shit. But, bro, it's trap. It's, it's just, it, bro, it's, nigga, it's so many different elements it's into so it, bro. Wide. Like, you know what I'm saying? You got a Wheezy. Then you got Southside. You got a Wonder Girl, which is, like, totally different from yeah. Southside Wheezy. You got... But, like, we ain't even call it trap to the, tw- the 2010s. Like, where did we just... Like, come, where did the word come from? Come with these labels. Like, even what trap is, like, I always looked at it like trap was a subject matter. So it's like T.I. or like Guwap back in the day with the trap music. These niggas on beats talking about hustling and selling dope. So that's like classifies it trap music, as trap music. How is a beat without anybody on it at all? Like, oh, that's a trap beat. Hey, you know that that is a mm. fact. Cause now that not, is a fact. You it's feel not me? Even like right. a trap beat. It's a drill beat now, but it's the same beat. You know? I could have played the beat back in 2017 when it was classified as a trap beat. You know? All right. Or even back in the day, they'll just say, "Oh, this hip hop or rap." You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know, bro. Maybe it's just me, but just me, I mm, I don't like when niggas be trying to do that or box you in. I'll be like, "Oh, he's a hard trap producer." Like, no, just say I'm a hard music producer. You feel me? Like, well, I got it. I'm going to make a country album or something for y'all niggas to be like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I wonder if, like, a Billie Eilish hop, hopped on, like, what they classify as a trap beat. Like, would they still call it a trap beat? No. I don't think so. I don't think so either. Because a That's lot of that type saying. music, like, over the years, you done heard a lot of them bite swag with a lot of the drums and shit, like, when they thought it was beneficial. No commercial trap is. You know what I'm saying? But they're not going to call it that. they still just going to call it. But you know, they're going to do it in the most cleanest pop way. You know what I'm saying? But like, I mean, niggas for decades been doing hi-hats and 16 notes. Like, that just been going on. You know what I'm saying? But, um, I don't know. I guess it's just the time. Baby, man, so I ain't gonna lie, I'm about to go way, way back on this one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's crazy because you just dropped the whole album. I'm gonna go back to the first one. 19 yeah. and Boom, 2014. Right. Nobody, like, right, we gotta talk about that one. Like, what made you put out an album so early in your career? It was like, what was the process with that album? I mean, not album, mixtape. Um, it was something I always wanted to do, bro. It, it started out as, it was years in the making. People don't even know. I got to find the old covers, like them Photoshop covers. Before it was 19 and booming. It was like 16. It was like 17 and booming. And it just wasn't done. I went where I wanted to be. Then it ended up being 18 and booming. I remember I had a cover for that. And it went, it went until 19 to where I was like, okay, it's time. I was settled in Atlanta. I had moved. Um... And this is when we was all at DARP every day. So even the process with that, I had a room that I had used every day. Like really, me, Southside, like Sonny, Spence, Wheezy. Um, we used to all be at this one studio every day. It was Dallas, Austin, that old studio, DARP. But um, shout out my boy Chris. He had, uh, white boy Chris, we really had, um, I had linked up with some folks. Man, it's a crazy long story. I'm not even gonna get into that part of it because then I'm gonna lose track of the question. But anyways, the studio we used to always be at and uh, we used to just be in there working all day and we ain't had to pay for no studio time. Like, 
because it was some people that had bought it privately. But like we would bring artists through and like they would get business and stuff. So like, um, I used to just be in there every day, just making beats and making songs. And I don't know. I guess I always just didn't had that hunger to like, just like make a project type thing. You know what I'm saying? Like that, that was the first one, the first time I had did anything like that. And, um, I don't know, bro. It just happened. You know, it was a blessing. I learned a lot from that. And that's why it's crazy even thinking about, like, from 19 and booming to now type thing. And, and just all the things I done learned every time from, like, doing, like, a whole album or project. I feel like that's also probably why I done produced less songs is because I done feel more in love with, like, just the whole project thing. And that come, probably come from, like, my desire for the movie thing, too. It's just, like, world building, like, universe building. Like, it's just, like, you know. But, um, yeah, Nice and Booming was crazy, bro. We was just all in the studio every day. Uh, I did that with Spins, Trapaholics, and Lil' King. Shout out King, Spins, and Hood Rich. I mean, Spins and uh, Trapaholics. But uh, we just all be in the studio every day. Different people would be up there, like, thug. Cash out, uh, just yeah, everybody. Cash out. Yeah, all the producers, everybody. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> I had a couple songs. Yeah, I had a couple songs on there with uh with Pluto. Cause, you know, I was signed to him, so like, I had a couple some Mason Margiela and some other shit we had put on there. Um, Trinidad James was on there. Oh, I forget about them, bro. That Atlanta was crazy. You know what I'm saying? Atlanta really got, Shout I can't out. even lie, they might got the biggest influence in No, nah, for, sure, for sure, of course. Then, I but, always ask that question, but n now that you like talking about this and breaking it down, yeah, for sure. Everybody was on there, bro. You got to think. Fresh, Recipes Fresh, Bank Rolls on there. You got, um. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the oh, D, they definitely bro, had the biggest you influence. remember the Bank Rolls sure. movie? A world no. star with, with got that yeah yeah the movie yeah. yeah yeah you know watch that y'all don't clown me I didn't I didn't watch no black movies for real I'm just watching black movies as I'm growing up now oh it was a real movie I never one, like yeah, it was like YouTube. some world star <laughs> shit <laughs> yeah, like world star <laughs> never seen it was fire though it was shit was fire schooly schoolboy like it was just a time bro like you know as a New Yorker I hate to take that L but yeah um <laughs> you so you talking about that first album. What you really like set the trend for producers putting out albums for real, for real. Do you think that up and coming producers should be dropping mixtapes like how you drop, you know, like that? I feel like up and coming producers should do whatever they feel like that their soul and their heart feel like doing to express themselves through their art. I like that. So if it's you just want to make beats. I don't even say it, just making beats like that's some whatever shit, but like if you want to just make beats, that's cool. If you want to make beats and songs or write songs, it's cool. If you want to put whole projects together, you know, that's cool. Like I want other niggas to be inspired to, for us to have more producer albums and and, and more. Uh, <laughs> man, that water been beating our ass already. <laughs> that Kroger water, man. We got we to gotta get y'all some more water. I think it's making my voice even worse. Kroger water ain't right. Like Divas, I, <laughs> my voice keep going in and out. That Kroger water ain't right. <coughs> but yeah, man, niggas just need to do like whatever they soul tell them, bro. Like, I would love to see like more producer albums and more like smoke all of that shit, bro. bro I want to see that shit too, man. My boy DB. I want to see that album so bad. You no, know, DB, he uh, signed to Jacob. Oh, for real? Yeah, he did. Yeah, all right. Bro, I can't. What's the, what's the song with, with Ye in, in Future? Keep it burning. He did that. He did. Yeah. Um, it's, it's it's a whole bunch of others, but it's, it's all I can think of. My bad, DB. I just folded. Shout out, DB. He got this sound. It's called like we call it shit. Trying. What's it called? Trying Tron music. Like T R O N. Yeah, yeah. but it, it's like That's real aggressive. Like, but it's hard though. It's real aggressive, like eight oh eight mafia type drums, but it's, it's different. It's like, like just thinking the word alien. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then like the melody, like real aggressive. Just think, like, just real aggressive, like like hip hop aliens. Trying. That's yeah. cool though. See, I like creative shit like that. Like yeah. that's we need like that's the type of shit we need, bro. Yeah, yeah. You gotta lock in with bro, like bro, for real. Oh uh, yeah. yeah, I yeah. fuck with Jacob hard, man. Jacob, my nigga. Yeah, yeah. 
So what advice would you give to your younger self if you were trying to come up in the industry today with like how different everything is now? I feel like my work ethic has always been on a thousand because that's what I just love to do anyway. So it don't just feel like work like that. It's just like, you know what I'm saying? You're doing something you love. Doing something I love. So like, nigga, I'll fight to do this. What you like, like what you do when you burnt out? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, do you just, fuck it, we gonna make beats or? Nah, nigga, I'm gonna get, you know, I asked this, this shit why I asked, um, I had, you know, someone had asked it in the group chat, it was like, cause I was looking for questions and I was, if someone was like, what does um, he do when he burnt out? And this nigga was like, this nigga probably run through a big ass mansion. <laughs> oh, I don't know, so random nigga, it was like, that nigga mansion probably just run through his big ass mansion to get some ideas or some shit. Oh, me? Oh, you asking niggas right now? Nah, I, yeah, I asked a nigga in the group chat, I was like, oh, oh drop yeah. some questions. And nigga was like, oh, ask Metro what he do when he burnt out? And nigga was like, and then they probably run through a big ass mansion. Nah, 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 nah. I'm trying to hold that shit in. So bad. That's funny. <laughs> nah, hell nah, bro. But I, I um, what you mean like burnt out? Yeah, like, like when out, you got like, like in a creative bag, creative like, block, just can't, like, like a block type thing. Yeah, yeah. B block. B block. Oh, you That's just burnt. Like, you just like, damn, bro. I've been making beats for seven days a week. I got like three hours of sleep. Like, what you doing when you burnt? Man, when I was young, Girl, I keep saying like, I was young, like I'm 50, but like I was about to say, <laughs> I'm 29. I, well, I be, th- I just been in it for a long time, so I just be thinking about young. I be thinking about like 19, 20 years old, shit like that. You know what I'm saying? So like back then, not even all the way back then, even up until a few years ago, I would just, I don't know, but I would just burn it all the way out, just keep going. Like, I would just never like not nothing. And they'd be doing all this and not even putting no songs out or nothing. It's just like, just doing it. But like, I done learned to, as essential as it is to be doing this, it's essential sometimes to walk away from it. You gotta walk away. Just your ears, your brain reset, just everything. Like, I love movies. I watch a movie. Movie might inspire me or something. Um, Cause it'd be a lot of times, like I might be making a beat or be kind of like, I might be doing it a certain way and then go home, go to sleep, wake up the next day and pull the same beat up. Try it a different way. And it'll be like, in one second, I'll know everything that needs to happen with it. But couldn't think about it the day before because maybe you just burnt or just like, fresh ears is a real thing. That's a real gem I want to drop for niggas. Fresh ears is a real thing, bro. Like sometimes you just got to come approach songs and beats with fresh ears. It'd be like there were songs too a lot of times like, me and Ethan will be up working on the song all night. Might be working on one verse just for hours. And then it's like, nigga, go home. Or I hear it in the car on the way to the studio the next day. And it'll just be, I could just hear every single thing wrong with it or that needs to happen because it's just fresh ears. I learned that's a real thing. And um, to get inspired again, I, I like to listen to music that inspired me growing up and music I listened to growing up. That's why I get really most most of all my inspiration. Like I had like the twenty seventeen point where we was talking about the big Sean shit and all that. Like then you know music started going another direction type thing. As far as the quality of shit. So like and I wasn't really listening to I don't listen to a lot of shit now. I'm not even gonna lie. Like I listen to a lot of shit, but like a lot of new shit or like what be going on. Um but I had, I had to think about it. I was like, what got you going when you was in high school making beats excited? Shit, it'd be like all the shit I was listening to back then. Like, so I'd be listening to all kind of shit from my childhood or through high school and all that shit. And I just be getting so much <laughs> inspiration from that shit. I could hear it like Three Shades Mafia. Come on, that's yeah, a, that yeah. was one of the biggest things growing up, me listening to. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Sixth grade. One of my closest friends back then, Kendall, man, shout out Kendall. He's from Memphis. And that's all he used to talk about. That's all he used to like listen to. So that shit really like opened a lot of shit up for me. And I just became like obsessed with it. Like, you know? So yeah, I just be listening to shit like that all day. So is movies like what you do for fun? Yeah, I love movies. I love watching movies. Like playing a game. I be what happened? Like 2K, that's it. 2K, um, no Madden. Nah, I got Madden. That's what I'm finna say next. 
I had just started back playing Call of Duty, so I've been, <coughs> I've really been locked in on that after uh, the album drop. It's like every time after I drop an album, I really start back locking in on the Call of Duty. For sure. Yeah, yeah I take some it's, it's one of them time. things like, during the album, I don't be able to do it like that because Call of Duty, I'd really be locked in on the music. And Call of Duty, one of them things like, you gotta be locked in on it or like you, you'll get rusty, bro. Like you gotta, Think about it. You, if you stop playing Call of Duty today for six months and you come back, you probably ain't going to be like, or a year or whatever, like you got to get back. Like, you know what I'm saying? So like when the album, whatever album be done, then I just be locking in on whatever the newest Call of Duty is. Yeah, so, yeah like, Call of Duty, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I ain't going to lie. But how long I've been on this new one? It's probably only been like a month. Maybe like six weeks. I can see a nigga. That's the real message. You know how like a nigga having a conversation with himself by playing the game? I can see a nigga. Right, every time. That's the like, real Metro book. Niggas would just walk in uh, like, because years ago I fucked up and on Twitter I had put my um, PlayStation yeah. shit on there. And just a hell of folks that added me so I don't even know most of them people. So I be on Call of Duty and niggas just walk in like, yo, this really Metro? And they'll just okay. say some shit. <laughs> or just walk out. Uh, even when I be on Call of Duty, like, my name on there, too, like, I be more a target. Like, niggas just be trying to fuck me up. That's it. Like, all the cruise missiles and shit, that shit coming straight for me. Not like, as soon every- as you step foot on the field, they killing you. <laughs> Bro, all the time. Because, you know, niggas be recording when niggas will say, like, oh, yeah, I, yeah, I killed Metro, Metro on the game. game. <laughs> like, you know? Lame as hell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I ain't gonna lie, but, but during quarantine, I was locked in on that shit. Hey, oh, but that was uh, Modern Warfare. They yeah, yeah, yeah. When they first rock. came out with the Warzone. I had a random ass nigga DM me one time. It was like, yo, I watch your tutorials and shit. Uh, you funny as hell on the game. And I was like, oh, appreciate that. And then I was, I said, I was like, what the fuck? I said, nigga, I ain't played a game with you. He was like, yeah, bro, I, I just, we was playing ground when I heard your ass raising out. Cause I be raising on Call of Duty. For real? So I heard your ass raising out. My shit say proud by TV Digital, so you exactly know who I am. Damn. I was like, oh, shit. Embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> that's embarrassing. <laughs> I, I used to um, be on GTA online a lot, too. I was fucking with that too. I hate GTA. I missed out on GTA. I mean, I ain't gonna say I missed out. I just ain't never. I was on Saints Row, bro. That's my. J- I just oh, don't get the man. point. I was on the off ramp. <laughs> <laughs> bro, you was playing that and not playing GTA? I know that disappointed me. You said I was playing the off ramp. Mm-hmm. That's how I feel about how Matt uses. All right now. Damn. <laughs> you gonna come for the Mac? He looked at a dinosaur and looked at me like, damn, bro. <laughs> damn, bro. But yeah, nah. I'm always be mainly a PC nigga forever, but. I use my Mac for a lot of shit, and you know, I work with a lot of songs and do a lot of song editing and like fucking with shit. So like my pro, I use Pro Tools for that. So like I be on my MacBook a lot, mm-hmm. a whole lot. All right, so we got this favorite song segment, and you know, we want to cover some songs you ain't never talked about before. I feel like this is the hardest fucking part because nigga, we gotta. Of course, we're not gonna talk about every song. So I got like two, three songs, but it's like to pick two, three songs out of your catalog. Like, damn, because you know you got someone in the comments and they're going to be like, man, they ain't talking about this, but I'm sorry. We can't talk about every song. It's too many. So basically, I'm going to name the song and then you kind of say, like, the process, your experience with the song. For sure. So the first one is Father Stretch My Hands. Mm. Nah, I love that song. Mm. I can't clutch with it, nigga, yo. <laughs> man, Father Stretch My Hands. Uh, I mean, when Kanye was working on Pablo in L.A., I had... Um, I started pulling up on him a lot um, while he's working on it. And, uh, you know, he have different people just try shit with different songs. And I remember he just had a sample to it. He was like, man, I want to do something with this. So I was working on some other shit too, some other songs. <coughs> so I couldn't really, I ain't really get to like, but he had, uh, he had like a, him and you know, Kanye have a bunch of people and everything. So like some other folk, whoever had was doing the rest of it, he had like a skeleton of it. He was like, man, I want you to fuck with this. And um, he had gave me like the session all the files for it. So I took it with Ethan and I forgot what album me and Ethan was working on at the time. Like that was my main focus. So and to me, like it's Kanye, like it's one of my all time idols. So I'm like, and it's always been like on my bucket list of like, man, to work with Kanye West, bro. So like, I'm really just downplaying myself. I kept, cause Ethan every day was like, man, you got fuck with the A shit. I was like, 
whatever I do, bro, he probably ain't gonna fuck with it. No way. You know what I'm saying? I was just thinking like that. So he kept pressing me to do it. So then I had ended up did it and did something. And I was like, sure in my head, I was like, man, he probably ain't gonna fuck with this shit. So sent it to him. Um, but I still didn't know was he gonna use it or not. Then he sent me a few other songs. He sent me uh, Waves uh, and FML with Weekend. And um, I did some shit to those two and sent them back. And he had ended up using all of them. So I, I had, um, I didn't even know he was using them. I remember I had, I was gonna get on a flight. He called me out of nowhere. He's like, it's when he was at Madison Square Garden for the shit, the, um, he was playing all the shit, uh, that fashion, all that shit. Um, and he had, he had called me, he was like, yo, cause I sent it without my tag, cause I know I'm, I'm like, it's a bunch of niggas. So I was like, it's a Kanye song. I ain't just trying to just throw my tag. Like, I ain't have it on there. He called me, he was like, yo, I need you to send that tag, send that, send that young Metro tag. So I was like, all right, I just sent it to him. And I got off the plane, and I opened my phone, and like, just Twitter, Instagram, my everything, phone, everything was exploded. And just that video of him and Cuddy and Travis jumping around with the shit. And I had never even heard it like that until like I had seen that shit. So that's that's really how that happened. And yeah, I'm gonna remember that forever for sure. That's hard. Yeah, that was a blessing. Cause I that was really some shit I almost didn't do, bro. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like this close to not doing, cause I was just thinking like <coughs> it might have been probably an immature way to look at it, but might have been like, not a waste of time, but just like, you know, but it ended up working out. And it sounds so crazy. I feel like that was one of the ones nah, in the that catalog. Song, crazy. like, nah, bro, it's the one. I remember, I actually saw the video, like one of the, it was a clip. I think it was, it was, it was you, Kanye, I think Travis. I really don't remember because it was so long ago. It was a clip of y'all at some concert and y'all was on stage and the song was playing. It was just the whole vibe it was crazy. It was some type of, it wasn't a meme. It was just a video that was going around. Yeah. And I was like, damn, what fucking song is this, bro? And it was just the build up of the song and then the drop came. And then I was like, man, what the fuck, what song is this, bro? And I remember listening to it and I was like, damn. That was crazy, bro. Like, even when I heard how he placed the tag, like, I never would have did it. You know, I always do the, you know, mess with you, I don't you, I don't shoot you. Boom. Yeah. And the one. But he had like the shoot you on the one. Like it was dropped out, I almost shoot you. That was like, I was like, damn, like this That's nigga brain, say. like I he never in a million creative, years would have, yeah. I would have put it like the regular way, uh -huh. you know? But yeah, he's a genius for sure. All right, so next song. I ain't gonna lie, this is another underrated one. I'm sorry, y'all, cause I know y'all gonna be in the comments be like, bro, TB, I don't, I ain't talking about this one. But the next one is Diamonds Dancing. I had a feel. I was wondering diamonds, in my head the whole diamonds, time. I was like, is he gonna mention that one? Oh yeah, that's my nigga. That's my favorite. Like, what was that timeless record? That's, that's, in, that's in my top ten favorite beats. For real, nah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, bro, for I feel sure. like niggas don't really talk, bro. What, bro? We don't hear about that song enough. You know how many? So we had to get on that. Like, 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 you know how many got FML P on there? Yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah, 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 y
And I was just like, what the fuck? Even how he came with them drums, it was just like, you know what I'm saying? Just that, with that together, it just made some whole other shit. So I had sat in the studio, uh, shout out my boy Jimmy, an engineer. I had sat in the studio like, with Jimmy, it was like two days or like a few days. It was something. And it was just like sculpting, crafting the song, like for days type thing. And then I remember at the end, it's like, when you sculpting some or painting some with all these little details and all that, and then after you're done, you just zoom out and look at it, it's like, damn. So it ended up being like that. So then we did with the time when we studio with Drake, it's one of the things we played and yeah, fuck with that shit for sure. But yeah, that diamonds yeah. dancing, like nigga, that shit crazy, bro. Like, what what would you like, what would you describe that feeling when you listen to it? Like, I feel like like you in a big ass room. When I still and listen you by to yourself it. and it's just a speaker and like you feel the shit. Like you feel that beat. Like that shit hard as fuck. Man, that shit is hard. I ain't gonna lie. That's that's definitely that a fact. That's a good one. You bringing that one up. Right, why yep. you say why why you say niggas is gonna look at that like that's a good nah, one? Nah, I couldn't, bro. They wanna hear that. I was other asking song. niggas what songs should we ask about and niggas was saying songs and I was just like I said, where it's so uh, some other songs in here that they any picking song, the songs bro. everybody gonna pick though. We could chop this shit in the three four part. You can talk about any song. I'm a, I, okay. I got an idea, but I'm gonna tell you because okay, we are gonna wrap it up because this is the last question. But I'm gonna tell you the idea I got so we could get all these other good questions in there. Okay, so for the final question, um, so like a while ago, somebody had told me that they feel like these interviews are pointless. Who and- say that? I don't want to say no names. I be watching. I be picking up gems from them. Right. Like that Timberland shit. Exactly. I love that shit. Like a lot of them shits. I be watching them. Like of course all my podcasts. You fold the Timberland interview? Bro. I feel like I folded on Thank you that because interview. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I I'm not going to lie. When they told me that, like it discouraged me a little bit. But then like the other half of me was like, no, now I just want to go harder to prove that these interviews do mean something. They do mean so something. So I need to ask that you. that shit inspired me. Like right. all, all the interviews. So what are you going to say? My bad. That. No, you're fine. I appreciate that. So I want to ask you, what do you think the benefits of having these producer platforms like Producer Grind and Producer Culture are? I feel like it's huge. Like I, y'all probably wouldn't know it, but both of them Instagram pages, like, I check them regularly. You know what I'm saying? Like that's amazing to hear. For regularly, me. Um, I feel like it's very important, bro. Like these are all the benefits. Like I was saying, the other shit with technology earlier, it's a lot of benefits to it too. Like this is all the kind of shit that that I wish a dream that, that we had back then. Like, if we could watch some or go to a place and hear, like, Pharrell or Ye or, like, Dre, Drummer Boy, Zay, Shotty Red, just anybody, let's just come talk about that kind of shit or just give any kind of insight, bro. Like, I used to take the little smallest pieces of shit of niggas doing anything and I get inspiration from it. I still do. I still get on YouTube like a kid and, just watch videos and niggas in the studio back then or just all that shit. Like, but I feel like this shit is very important. And that's why I didn't wanted to do this for a long time, but I just wanted it to be the right time. But like, I didn't want to do this for a long time because I definitely feel like it's very important. Like, and it's very helpful and it's very inspiring. And like, as far as other people, like, with me, insp- inspiring others is like one of the, I feel like my main purposes and just services as just a human and everything God gave me like, and put into me, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, I feel like it's part of my duty and responsibility with that to inspire others and enlighten others and give them like whatever kind of knowledge and information I got. I feel like information is huge, bro. And like information is key. And like y'all be having a lot of information, a lot of gems. Like I be watching this shit, learning shit. You know what I'm saying? Or might watch Timlin shit or somebody shit and be like, "Man, that nigga feel the same way I do." Or like, you know what I'm saying? Like all that shit's important. So if it's doing that for me, like you know what it's doing for somebody in their bedroom, got school in the morning, making beats, like. No, that it gotta make me feel way better enough. Man, for come on, now. I appreciate Bro, that. For it. Here, no, I swear to God, God somebody told me that. <laughs> <laughs> I know I put that on everything. On here. Come on, I, mean, but I yeah. put that on everything I love. Somebody literally was like, <laughs> "I really think these interviews are pointless." Mimi was see it's always gonna be somebody saying some comment, bullshit. You know what I'm saying? No, it wasn't a comment. Yeah. It came from somebody that I was like working under. So can you imagine how that feels? All right, yeah, that's different. exactly that's what I'm saying. It didn't come from a YouTube comment. It's like, damn. So you feel like what I'm doing don't mean nothing. Like, you gotta understand though, everybody needs different information. He probably already has the information, just don't need that information that 
Yeah, you know that's true. That's like me watching a goddamn a video on the science of rocks, nigga. It ain't for me, nigga. I don't nigga. give a damn about it. Rocks. <laughs> sediment. <laughs> sediment. <laughs> the nigga said sediment. Yeah, nigga. I, I went there with school. All right, man. So I know that was the closing one, but we're going to end it with this one right here. Oh, because it's about God, of course. We can end with that. Yeah, nah, we, for sure. We can end with this one. I lied, y'all. My bad. We got to end it with one more. It's this song. Yeah. I just can't remember the name, but it's a song which is, I think it's off Travis' album. Um, what was his first one? Rodeo. I. Or was it Days for Rodeo? Or Rodeo. I think it was Rodeo. It's you, Wonder Girl, and it was his bridge. Obviously, Zaytoven was on. Just can't remember the song. It was you, Zaytoven. Only song on on Rodeo that me and Zay was on was Thirty Five Hundred. I don't think Wonder Girl was on. So you should have left that question involved. Let me see. It. Let me see. Is this the one right here? I know when I. I know when I hear it. Like, he should have asked you about God and let's close this. What's it? What's it called? Right. This this for the God people. First. Though. How to get this one for the people? Man, the people need God. Right. <laughs> oh, we, 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 we gonna end it. We gonna end it with that one. Okay, yeah, bet. Yeah, yeah, we gonna end it with that one. We gonna end it with that one. But it was our rodeo. You said bro, say. YouTube, man. They be tripping with the ad, like. Yeah, I got YouTube premium. Bro, I be on YouTube too <laughs> he much. Step your game. Bro. I got YouTube too much, <laughs> nigga. Yeah. But man, when I was younger, like back, like years ago, I went. What's that? It was though. What? I thought one of the girls was on it, but she not on it. Yeah, it was like me, Mike, Mike Dean. That's what it was. That's that's why I said one of the girls, Mike Dean. Yeah. So I wanted to talk about like, what song is your favorite? Like, I know it'd be weird when niggas ask you like, oh, what's your favorite song or what song meant the most to you? Because you know, did so many. But like, what song did you have the most fun, like, collabing with other producers wise? You know what I'm saying? Because this song right here meant a lot to me. We had a lot of fun on that song yeah. too. Like. I'm about to say, he probably got so many fun collabs. Fun? I feel like the way, the reason, like, my music come out how I do and people enjoy it and take it how they do is because I just have fun with it, bro. We all have fun with it. Like, every time, it's never too serious. Like, we just always, we have fun. I feel like just that vibe and just that, Comfort and just relaxedness. I don't think that's a word, but relaxedness is like it's key and vital to that. So fun. I'm trying to think. We be having fun with so much shit. Like, mm. you got him back to the thinking boy. Look what you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, these are the parts that I get to trim down. And you probably say forty minutes doing that, but uh. Man, so much shit, bro. Like, all right, give us one. It don't gotta be your favorite. So nobody get their feelings hurt. It's not the favorite. It's just one. Just hey, give us one that one. was like, oh, uh, like Skyfall energy. Like, you know, I know, he said he had a lot of those. That'd be like most of the time. Like, we always just get in there, and even with the songs that ain't out or might not never come out. Like, niggas just have fun, just kicking and making songs. Or uh, I'm trying to think. He said they a vibe every day. It's a vibe. They gotta be like, but then you hear it and feel it. Like, I feel like that vibe in the room, like a capsule, it get like trapped or like it's like inside the music. And then it's like, then put the song out, y'all hear it. It's like kind of like you get to like peek in the room or be in the room, like kind of like feel that energy. So, um, <laughs> you ready for that God yeah, question? You ready for the God yeah. question? <laughs> We we can get it, man. You done had a real funny shit. <laughs> yeah, a lot of fun. Too like, much fun. <laughs> too much fun. Me and Pluto done had a lot of fun. And Trav done had a lot of fun. Savage done had a lot of fun. Like, um, I'll say this. I'll say this. All right. Yo, and I ain't told fun. nobody. Be actually that shit. <laughs> <laughs> the um, like the whole like two. It's like almost two and a half years. I was working on this album, and um. The studio that I was using in LA that I got, we had ended up, uh, it took, they had this big ass live room behind the A room. So it had got turned into a club type shit, like an actual club, club, like installation, oh, so everything. Was really having a blast. So they started to call it, after so long in LA, they just started to call it Club Metro. So we started to have these, like, these parties, bro. 
and they would just get crazy. Like, but we would just, it started off the idea be like, okay, be in a vibe and play songs, test songs. But then it, it just started to turn into like a real, like, and it'd be these parties with like everybody you could think of just in the party. So like my room, my main room, I do everything out of is in the back of the studio. So a lot of times we'll be in a party just vibing. I'll just tap somebody, man, might be Trav, um, Chris Brown, Pluto, just Slime, anybody. Like, I'm like, hey, shit, come to another room real quick. Just pull a beat up or something. And while niggas just already in that vibe, like, niggas might bring Go a few people it. in there and like, yeah, you know what I'm saying, at the same time, so. Oh, that's definitely a way to create a vibe for sure. Yeah, so a, a lot of this album was like off of that type of thing. I say that. Yeah, yeah. We need to we need to find the next wave of niggas. It was a real bar in there too. Like they had a real bar, like installation. Oh, like, y'all was lit. Like lights, like LED, like everything. It was like couches, like furniture. It was oh, like, it was a real, real club. Yeah, that's what I was saying. It was like a it reminded me of Club Digital, you know. Yeah, it facts. It's studio. It's giving Club it Digital vibes. Yeah, 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 exactly. And the room was big, so it was like, but it wasn't just, it was still, it wasn't small, but it was big, but just the perfect size to where it was enough room, but it's still enough, intimate. Right. Like, they had put them PA speakers in there, and that shit just, that shit was crazy. All right, man, so this is the closing question. I ain't gonna lie, bro. First off, I even get to the closing questions. I'm gonna say appreciate you for coming on this platform. I appreciate y'all for having me, bro. I'm such a big fan of everything y'all do. I appreciate what y'all do, and like I've been wanting to do this for a long time. That's crazy, bro. Cause like I know, even though we like a a known producer outlet in the hip hop producer community, like compared to like the other channels that just generally do artists and stuff, like we're very small. In the hip hop community, so just that for you to I come on with here, it. that why I fuck with shit it, hard, man. especially with the time, nigga. Like I said, this one, this a master class, bro. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we about to hit three hours in like ten seconds. You feel me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just got your notebook, nigga. <laughs> Y'all ever Take did three hours before? No. Two hours and forty, Buddha. Okay, but oh, I had yeah, a couple yeah. like almost three hours, yeah. but like two hours forty. You know what I'm saying that's one thing, bro. You nigga, you, until you got there, I think Buddha had to be like, I think Buddha. Stop just stop being high. He said, I right, we gotta got it. But yeah. yeah, we could just talk, especially yeah, the I shit can, we talk about. Bro, I love like that how you could tell like this my soul's really tired in this, bro. I could talk about this till three in the morning. All day. Mm -hmm. Like it's you know what yeah. I'm saying? It's like breathing. We gotta say Mimi though, cause she no. My voice is done. Voice killing her. <laughs> but the question is, you tweet all the time, thank you God for the day, and you post scriptures on your story or Bible verses and stuff like that. So just talk about your faith real quick, good way to end this podcast. Man, um, it's just how I was raised, bro. My mom raised me like that. She raised me and all my brothers and sisters like that. Like, and I really walk by faith, you know. I walk by faith. I don't walk by sight, and it's something I really believe in. So it's like, um, cause I don't just like even been through so much in life, even before this past year. Just like, seen so many examples on how it's real. You feel me? So like, uh, I feel like we are vessels. I'm a vessel for God to shine his light on me and it's supposed to be through me and onto others. And I feel like that's my responsibility. Not just like as a producer, but just as a human here on earth, blessed to be able to breathe. You feel me? So like, I done tweeted, thank God for the day, every day since 09. I had made Twitter in ninth grade. Every day since ninth grade, you know what I'm saying? And consistently. So it's like, that's something that's very near and dear and close to me. I just been raised like that my whole life. And I just feel like we, it don't be that much of that or acknowledged anymore or, you know what I'm saying? Which is cool. I don't ever try to push religion or push nothing on nobody, but I'm just saying this is just me and my faith and my belief. So, um, Another thing I want to say is nothing. I, I ain't never addressed this in my career so far, but like when people like it really be like it kind of like baffles me when people would be like they'll take the whole Boominati thing and then just be like I, bro, it be shit online. Niggas will really be mad at me and be like oh bro, you on some devil shit or this or that or that or that and I'd be like far from that. Like, it's the exact far from opposite. That. Like, like, I'm telling y'all, I'm saying thank God for the day every day. Like, I'm I'm going through shit. Everybody go through shit. So, like, these same scriptures that's helping me, 
I know they helping other people. Like I was just posting them in the beginning, but then people always hit me and be like, man, this one really helped me today. Uh, somebody told me that yesterday. Somebody always tell me, don't stop posting them, bro. You don't know who they helping. So like, just it, so it'd be like with all these things, it'd be like, how could y'all even like fathom to why could my logo so a fucking pyramid with an eye? Like that, that makes me like a devil worshiper. Like even the whole Buminati concept, like when we had took, when I came up with the name of it for the, for my label, my boy Flea, shout out Flea, had thought of the name. I was like, I wanted to spin it. I remember back in high school, the whole Illuminati thing was like, some niggas bought into, like we used to watch the conspiracy video, uh, theory videos on YouTube and shit, but we was kids. So even getting a name, like in my head, I'm like, niggas gotta know that shit ain't real, right? I'm just a thinking that, but you really be surprised. Like niggas really be like, yo Metro, I'm disappointed. You sold out. Uh, sold out? Like what you mean sold out? Like bro, I'm a man of God, cause of this pyramid. You know, even to me, I had looked at it like Illuminati, like what they say the Illuminati is. They be saying it's like a society or like a secret society or whatever. So a like-minded individuals or something. So I look at Illuminati like we a society of like-minded individuals who like, um, just with like similar like visions and drives and passions. And like, I always looked at it like to be like a close knit collective of just creatives that really like, really, really, really care about this shit. That's really what the basis of it was. You know what I'm saying? And is. So um, as far as all that devil shit, I'm like, y'all crazy like devil shit. I don't, I don't even be watching the movies that be having like all that. Devil stuff going on. I don't yeah. watch them type movies. Like all the spirits, like I believe in that stuff. So like I don't watch that type shit. So like for niggas to think I got anything to do with any kind of devil shit be really crazy to me. And I be seeing it all the time. It be like blowing my mind. And um, so yeah, I just wanted to say that just like don't, cause I always just ignored it. But now like I, I be seeing more and more people be saying and I be like, it really be crazy to me like that folks could even think that. Like even as far as pyramids, like the pyramids, like that's like our shit. That's some shit from Africa. So it's like, it's one of them things to where like- It has a deeper definition. Taking back the meaning or something. Like, y'all want to put the pyramid in the eye, like it's like some devil shit. Like where did, where is that even like, where did y'all even get that? You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know, that shit be crazy to me. But uh, nah, man, I'm a man of God, I walk by faith. People who say whatever, but um, I don't know. I ain't no nigga still believed in that type thing. Uh, people I, weird. People too weird. Like I doubt it. First, that that whole Illuminati shit. Like I doubt this shit's even real at all. I don't think it's real either. You know what I'm saying? Like, or at least not to how niggas were trying to put it. Yes, yeah, maybe it was some real kind of thing that was like some other shit. And that like was back the name. in the day. Like, you feel me? Yeah. But like, like nigga, even if there was a real Illuminati with the kind of world power and shit y'all talking about, that shit really got or whatever. Like. You think the little shit I'm doing, them niggas gonna let me know about it? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, what if anything, like a nigga like Elon Musk could be in that right. shit. Like, you know <laughs> no, what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you feel me? But like, that shit be silly to me, bro. Like, but I don't be caring about what people say, cause like You know who you are and you know that you're a man of God. And that's it, bro. You know what I'm saying? Keep posting those scriptures, cause like, I look I'm for a, scriptures. I post for sure. them every day. Like I wake up every day when I wake up. I don't, before I even touch my phone, talk to anybody, say hello to my brothers, sister, anything. You say a prayer. I wake up, I pray. I spend my long time with God. I pray. I sit in his presence. I read the my page for the day, and I just write with it. And that's how I start every single day. You have a scripture book, too? Yeah, for sure. Me, too. That's crazy. Yeah, for sure. So I'm going to tell y'all the truth sure. about this Illuminati stuff. That's why I'm making this face. All right, no. <laughs> I'm going to tell y'all the <laughs> don't truth. Don't want to hear it. The truth is... Uh, this is how we gonna end it. The truth is, the Illuminati shit. Nigga, we don't give a damn about that shit, fuck. <laughs> Bro, it be grown ass people. Like, but they don't, they don't write me long messages. Like the other day, I gave um, I gave uh, I gave new the Illuminati chain for the birthday the other day. So then, um, it had like the eye, and then like he had put like the eye with the pyramid on the emoji thing. And then I did the same thing and reposted it. 
Oh, niggas was blowing me up. I bet like, you had an essay. Oh, I know you and another right. thing, one more thing I would say about this Illuminati shit that I feel like it's fucked up because, like, my mama worked so hard her whole life to help me support my dreams and get me to where I wanted to do. I done worked so hard, like, so fucking hard. So it'd be like, it kind of be hurting when somebody just try to, like, just credit all that and be like, oh, you did that. You know, and I feel like it's a reflection of people on insecurities, on shit they feel like they can't do. So they be like, oh, the only reason you did this because you sold your soul. And another thing is, I feel like it's fucked up because that's only in our culture and like with yeah. our people. It's just that. And I feel like it's just another way to say, like, that's the only way niggas got money, like black people. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, they don't do that with other genres or, or Taylor Swift and Illuminati or whoever. They way bigger than us. You know what I'm saying? I just feel like it's something that we do to keep each other down, bro. And they got to snap out of that shit, bro. For real. I just pray that God continues to use you as a vessel. You thank got a you. gift. Definitely. I appreciate that. Your purpose is bigger, for sure. And I want to thank you again for coming on the show. TV, you want to add any ending credits? Uh, I ain't got, bro. This is, that's, wow. Whew. Masterclass. Nah, this was a Chill, great interview. Bro.